Well, howdy, folks. Welcome back in to Smite Summer Masters. It's promotion day. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you to Alienware for powering Smite Summer Masters as well as the entire SPL. Make sure to head on over to smitegame.com slash Alienware and utilize that code AWSMITE09 for all of the benefits therein. We got dives. Gore is joining me on the desk to talk about this next match here. And so far... First set of the day, a pretty good one. Yeah. Uh, pretty tight. Camelot Kings do come out on top, but it is promotion day, which means no one's going to sit home today. So nope. it's all positivity and happiness and yeah. good feelings, right? <laughs> so Valkyrie's moving on to play tomorrow and keep their dreams alive. But this next match, I'm looking forward to it. Could Same. go the distance. Solar Scarabs taking on the Olympus Bolts. The Scarabs looked great in their matches thus far. Yeah, I I'm honestly really excited to see what they have to offer. I think that the Bolts have been in an interesting spot. Again, you know, we've seen some of their wins. They climbed up towards the top of the, the standings there in Phase 2 for a good reason. And it's because they have been very consistent this, this phase. They've been very solid out of the jungle. Uh, I think we've really gotten to see just great performances out of everybody. Uh, the Scarabs, admittedly, again, a couple of things that have been shakily forced upon them. But they've adapted to it pretty well. And I think they looked pretty decent the other day up when they played against the Mambo. And so I'm curious as to, to what they're going to provide for us today. Well, here's our promotion day. We just saw the Valk stick on the Kings. Now we're moving on to Bolts and Scarabs. We still have Dragons and Warriors, as well as Levi's and Titans to look yeah. forward to. That Levi's-Titans match, that one's going to be a barn burner, to quote the uh, wise words of Hindu man there. Very much looking forward to that set as uh, we head into Olympus Bolts and Solar Scarabs here. Day number four of Smite Massive. Can you believe it's already been three days? I mean, just for like, me personally. Part of me is, says yes, and part of me says no. You know what I mean? Like, I can believe it, but also it's like, yeah, it really does Like now feel like it's flown by. Yeah, sure. And here's, we got that Group B bracket we're looking at here, Olympus Bolts. Taking out the Shibulba Storm pretty convincingly in day number one. We're moving on to Bolts and Scarabs here. And on that lower side of the bracket, we saw Hex Mambo fight into Shibulba Storm, eliminating them yeah. from Smite Master. So one of our first teams to go home there. And when we're talking about Scarab's Bolts, Gore, I think you have to highlight the veteran Barracuda from the Olympus Bolts, who's yep. been going on a tear recently, surrounded by great teammates, of course, and Stu, really sticking out to me here from the Solar Scarabs. Yeah, Stu, this is actually, he's technically now been in the SBL for like a full year, yeah, right? So we, we can give anymore. him the credit. Yeah, knock the rookie part away. <laughs> uh, he, he has been... I, I want to say just a breath of fresh air, right? I think even prior to, to the jungle and the roster swaps and any of that stuff, Stu was, was looking phenomenal. Uh, I think that he, he's been on, like, the radar, right, when he was playing in the SEC last year prior to getting picked up. Everybody was still like, oh, yeah, Stu's going to be, like, the next big thing. And, 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 you know, you get to see it, and it's like, okay, cool. How, how fast is he going to adapt to it? Because, again, we've seen how quickly and how difficult it can be. <laughs> I think he just realized that he's the one uh, we we're talking <laughs> about here. Stu. But look at that, an 18 KDA from the other day. Uh, I, I think you're looking at a guy who has just been playing, uh, you know, remarkably well. Over the last few weeks, even in losses, he tends to look really good. And I think that as a player, man, he's just stepped up, right? And, and, and he's exactly. been able to knock it out of the park. He's been a very, very, very impressive portion of the Scarabs roster. And I think that now that they've entered a, a kind of a new era, once again, he is going to be one of the, the, the things they can lean on and know that they're going to find success out of the duo lane because of him. He meshes well with the squad. Fits in, I would say, you know, easily into the conversation of top eight ECs in the league, which, you know, when you're top eight in the world, that is a phenomenal spot to be in. I mean, sure. he, he's definitely had a lot of plays that are, are just up there, right, with, with a lot of the uh, the rest of the carries that we've seen. And maybe it's not, the, you know, the same 10 years he's going up against Barra, but I think that he's got a long, pretty good career ahead of him, too. I would agree. You know, Gore, I think the moment that a player really starts coming into their own is when they start getting uh, – Portmanteau, right? When you start slamming god names yeah. and, and player names together, together, right? You got the Zuler, the, the Zap Uler, you got yeah. the Bear Apollo, the Stupid has been on a tear recently. Yeah. That's when you really know you've made it <laughs> in the Smite Pro League, is when you're known for a very specific god. You got to think, you got to ban out the Cupid has to go from Stu, yeah. right? You either have to take it away or pick it up. But then you, you're thinking, um, as we mentioned, Inbound has done a lot of work to make that Yemoja successful. That's been a great pick. Baronic has been playing that Chernobog to great success in the mid lane. Solar Scarabs have a lot of weapons on their side, and J-Mac is standing by with the Solar Scarabs to talk about those weapons. Yeah, that's right, Dimes. I am here in the booth of the Solar Scarabs. We've been taking on the Olympus Bolts in our second set of the day, and I've got the Hunter Stewart actually standing by. Now, Stewart, you finally had your, your full year in the SPL. You've had quite the glow-up. I mean, a lot. you've made a lot of fans. You've had some very impressive play. 
I mean, what do you have to say for uh, for your new fans over at home? Uh, you know, you know, thanks for being a fan, you know, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try my best, you know, never let you guys down, you know. That's that's it, you know. Hopefully so. Now, inbound the support. You've had some time in the SPL. You've had some tenured time and just in the leagues in general. And there was a little bit of smack talk yesterday that was coming from Death Walker in, in kind of their pregame segment. Do you have any smack talk to maybe throw over to the Olympus Bolts? Are you going to keep it nice and clean? Yeah, they're not looking too clean, so I'm not keeping it clean. You know what I'm saying? Oh, really? <laughs> Thinking the Bolts are keeping it clean. It's a pretty impressive play by them. Let's go over to the coach for a moment, Slaney. Tell me what it's like actually coaching for these guys, because I mean, it, it, it feels like you got a couple of handful of players over here. It's as simple as not as I don't get paid enough. I need double the salary. Double the salary for Slaney, the coach for the Solar Scarabs, and the dual lane for the Solar Scarabs. Feeling confident in their matchup for the Bolts? Will that confidence lead them to success? We'll have to see whenever it gets to the game. Back to the desk. You know, Gore, we always talk about how competitive the Smite Pro League has been recently, right? We've moved to LAN, it's never been tighter, but we never talk about how the personalities in the Smite Pro League have never been better. <laughs> Inbound is always a, a great character, Stu, feeling confident. I mean, Spirit's clearly high here for the Solo Scarabs. Yeah. They don't seem like they're all that worried taking out the Bolts here. It might have something to do with it, the fact that they can't get eliminated, right? So no matter the outcome today, uh, you know, they're still feeling mm -hmm. good. And I think that's that's part of it, right? Like, even if you lose here, you still get to play tomorrow. And admittedly, like, you've been in this spot before, right? You're, sure. sitting, you're sitting in the booths. You're across from the bolts. You did this twice in phase two. You did it once in phase one. Like, you've done it three times already at minimum this year. You can take a deep breath and kind of recognize that, like, you know how these guys play. You know what your game's like. And, and again, maybe try to adapt to, to, to the way things have been going lately. Again, for them, it's, like, been a little more turbulent. But I think that we've got to see them play with a, a little more like solid ground under their feet the other day. And so I expect that today they they should be feeling a little more confident like they are. When we talk about the Hunter for the Solar Scarabs, I think it would be criminal to not talk about Barracuda yeah. from the Olympus Bolts. I mean, when have we not talked about Barracuda for the last 10 years? It feels like, right, one of the most storied players in this league all yeah, the way actually. from co <laughs> like genuinely. Yeah, from cognitive <laughs> gaming back in the day, right? The classic MLC stealth ripping through sound. You know, that's all Barracuda now making their way to a very successful Olympus Bolts team, risen through the ranks as the seasons have gone by here. And Barracuda, just when you think you can't step it up anymore, somehow finds a way. Yeah, and look, Barra, like, outside of just being one of maybe the nicest people that I've just genuinely ever met, is like, he's so energetic in game, right? And I think that there's something that, that's really interesting about it because you can see this with some of the more tenured players. I think Zap on that list as well, Kivo. You know, they know how to handle their losses, they know how to, to adapt from, from, from week to week they know where their weak points are going to be and they know how to highlight those and so Barra, you know you can expect especially in a game like this we'll be able to say like okay look this is where like we're, we're going to be struggling same thing uh, for the rest of the squad and you get a, a lot of I think renewed energy right Lazbra is very very hype very energetic on this squad which I help I think helps bring it up and, and really the entire team you know you whenever you talk to the bolts whenever you're in the booth with them whenever that you see them like if they're in the break room or if you're watching a media day and we have the bolts here uh, you get the feeling that like they are just friends and like they are like they, they do feel like a team that gets along well that are are willing to give each other and accept critiques from each other and, and so things like that I think that have really benefited them as a whole and like you said tenure there being able to to quite literally have seen most metas like you know yeah there might be some new gods things like that but at the end of the day Barra's played in a meta where carries have been strong, where warriors have been strong, where guardians have been strong, where mids have been strong, where the jungle has been strong. You know, He's been able to adapt to it. And I think that it's going to be fun to watch how well they can, can kind of handle this because I think that individually, and actually these numbers add up almost perfectly to this, like KDA is a little bit better than, than what you're going to see out of Stu, but the kills themselves are a little lower, a lot more assists. He's not like the guy that's carrying the team. He's not necessarily farming as hard as possible, but he's going to be present in these team fights, whereas Stuart does feel like someone who kind of has to carry for yep. the Scarabs, has to be there to make sure they can find success. And, and so I think that, you know, you're looking at someone that is on the left side here, kind of essential for the Scarabs to win, and then someone who is a part of the team for the Bolts to win. I think Lasbra plays, like, the biggest role for them uh, in terms of being able to find, like, complete success. But then you also have to factor in Jake and Haddix, sure. you know, and, and where they're going to be. So I think that that's... The, the real kind of culmination of years of play is knowing that you don't have to be, like, the guy. You can just be in the team, do your job, play your role, 
and do what Barra does. Yeah, a lot of those stats stuck out to me. Like, for instance, Barracuda having the higher player damage, but Stu having the more kills, right? That's sort of contradictory, but yeah. not really when you think about it, because Stu is finding a lot of that aggression. He's picking up a lot of the kills, but as you said, Barracuda may be providing a little more value to the team overall, yeah. dishing out consistent Also, Vin is like a KDA player, so like right. he's going to steal them. Of course, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And you know what popped into my head when you were talking about tenure and veteranship? I mean, this... Venenu has been there, done that same thing with e United, right? Lazarus has been around for a while now. Awesome. Jake recently joining the league as we head into picks and bans here. But the Bolts have it all. The Scarabs certainly have a tall task ahead of them, but yeah. looking great thus far. And when you're talking P's and B's against both of these squads, you got to take away the dodgy. That has clearly been an issue so far during Smite Summer Masters. That has to go. But then you have Haddix calling Lancelot a, a broken god in an interview, right? Someone, you have to take that away from Haddix. And then lasbro has been looking great on the Pele. Yeah. As Ymir and Dodgy go immediately, the E set, which has been crucial in the support roles, taken away by the Bolts. And then same thing, you got to take away the Cupid from Stu. Uh, Chernobog has been very powerful as well. That's got to go. It seems like there's not enough bans on the board for every god that needs to be taken away yeah, and that's where you know that's where the game comes in right and i actually think what well, that's a benefit when you're second seed here it used to be a you know first seed if there was like one god left after the six that get banned that it's like that's the best god in yep. the game then yeah you're gonna lock them in but there's enough good i mean like right now like emoji is still on the board you would highlight a chernobog still on the board a lot of the jungle still on the board and, and you know it wouldn't be far-fetched for both of these teams you know sam likes to pick his up a little bit later bolts wouldn't are, are not fond of picking it up like in the top two i wouldn't be surprised if it's either right before the ban phase or if Lazbur's like last pick uh, you know, grabbing things for Haddix or for Jake super early on. Uh, I think that there's a lot of flexibility in the game right now. I also think there's a lot uh, on, on the plate of the Scarabs just coming into this because, you know, Camelot looking at it, historically, on! this is a matchup that has only ever gone for the Bolts. Even if the, the Scarabs can push it three, they, the, they've they never been able to get a set win right, over the Bolts. <laughs> and that's going to be something I think that, that kind of has to weigh into this. And, you know, very much to the pick what you are strong at, right? You had mentioned, and we saw inbound playing Yamoja the other day. Feels really Lance solid. A lot. Still <laughs> has like a 25% win rate, like sure. career wide yeah. for inbound. <laughs> Need to even though those recently, a bit. <laughs> it's, yeah, even though recently it's been a lot better. It's just like overall it hasn't. So it's like, I like the, the idea of them going for the <laughs> Xing Chen, right? Because them. that's a way better pick for you. Them. It's way stronger early on. Even though that means the Bolts might get that Yamoja, it does does still mean that you have a strength, but you know, Jake, very strong at Yamoja, but definitely someone that you can maybe capitalize on that pick a little bit more and Let's maybe pick at him scream. and force him into weird spots as opposed to, to any of the other supports he can bring. Well, already here in the first pick phase, these top six picks, I see a lot of back and forth. The King Arthur goes for Haddix, and then the Cupid picked up by the Bolts, taken away from Stu, but it's not like, I mean, Cupid top pick, top ban, so you know Barracuda's happy to put that one in their hands, and then in return from the Scarabs here, Discordia pick up to make sure that King Arthur doesn't benefit from that Discordia passive. But Venenu happy to play that Hell. We just saw a clip of Venenu fragging on Hell. So a great pick up there for the mid laner, for the Bolts. And then, of course, Jing Chen, the overall pick up, providing great CC, uh, mobility, just about everything you'd want in a support character. We head into the second round of bans here. You got to take that Kepri off the board. We just saw Genetics yeah. get Kepri twice, used to great effect to slam the door in the face of the Valhalla Valkyries. Pele also has to go as well. A great pick for Lazbra. And in return, it's Stu, Stu, Stu all day long here. Banning out Stu is the Olympus Bolts with the Shibalanke and Charybdis bans. Now, it is, you know, interesting to see because Osiris, I mean, still a very prominent jungler. Sure. And has been the top god pick, uh, you know, tied with a, like a Jingwei, an AMC, and a Xing Chen throughout phase two. So something that the Bolts could easily go back into, but they've also played, again, a lot of wild things. You know, the Daji was was banned, but like they, they like to bring out the Fenrir occasionally. This doesn't feel to me like it might be a Fenrir comp, although like yeah. it could work well with like Fields of Love, but th that's kind of it. Probably <laughs> right not. Now, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're not necessarily locking it in for anybody else. Uh, again, robin has been on that conversation sure. and in that list before as well. And that's like ignoring all of the other picks in the past that we've seen Bravery a lot of. Bravery always uh, To prevails. the point where... Erlong, right? Someone who was essentially should be and, and has been in the past in the same breath as the Osiris, yeah. but has not been picked up as much lately. And again, it's it's not even, I think, through uh, fault of, of that. I mean, granted, like, I don't think like a lot of the SEC teams want to play him. I think uh, it's been maybe a little more niche, right? If I'm, I'm thinking like layers, I wouldn't be surprised picking him up. I feel like Lasber can fall on that list. 
Well, the bolts here clearly have a game plan. This is I, Erlong Shin actually passed through my frontal cortex here because you see Cupid providing healing. Hell is yeah. a healing god as well. Erlong Shin has a heal on that ultimate, right? So yep. clearly the Olympus bolts here looking for that initial engagement, back maybe finding a pick, backing yeah. off, regrouping, utilizing that hell heal, the Cupid heal, and now the Erlong Shen sustain to find that re-engagement. So either absorbing the damage from the Solar Scarabs or initiating themselves, backing off, regrouping, yeah. and going back in. So I like this Erlong Shen here for Lazbra, and we know Lazbra knows how to play this god. Scarabs yeah. really taking their time. It's actually that point that I think is like the strongest, right? Like Erlong taunts are, are usually the initiator for the fight. Yeah. But then, okay, cool. Like you said, fall back. You're gonna get healed up. Hell's gonna heal. Keep it's gonna you know keep you topped off. And then you've got a King Arthur. And then whatever Jake ends up choosing, yeah. you're gonna have re-engage. So yeah. I think the the bolts are going to be able to either counter punch Frost if the scarabs me. jump into them, or uh, alternatively, they're just gonna be able to punch back away and then punch again. And I think that resurgence in team fights is something that. It can be very difficult. Luckily, again, uh, you know, now with an Osiris, you've got some anti-heal. Discordia can go into things like the Divine Ruin. Uh, sure. I think Xing Chen, when you're looking at Erlong and you're looking at Cupid, having the Furious Roar and specifically mm -hmm. auto attack damage reduction Big time. Uh, is going to be helpful against them. So they've definitely got things in their in their own kits to play with and deal with the bolts. But they're going to have to be very, very cognizant of it every time because I think otherwise that fight can get out of hand. The Heimdall for Stu provides some safety and provides incredible damage come the late game. One of the you know, uh, premier scaling hunters here is the Heimdall, especially in the hands of Stu. That's going to absolutely pop come 20, 25 minutes. The Bolts here have one more pick to make. That's going to be for Awesome Jake the support unless they do some weird Erlong Shin support probably not 99% <laughs> of the time you're handing that Erlong Shin into the very not capable correct. controller or I guess mouse and keyboard in this case of last it's going to be the Sobek pickup here for the Olympus Bolt huh. so talking about reinitiation but maybe a pluck or you know yeah uh, diving under the waters there for awesome Jake to find that reinitiation and here I'm going to quote Mifflin, who likes to quote Raffer on Sobek, okay. which is so like a two, two yeah, it's removed like it's, it's quote. Yeah, it's too removed. So <laughs> it, it's definitely heavily paraphrased at this point. Uh, but the idea, you know, like Sobek is really great if you hit that pluck. But whether you hit it or you don't, you are now deeper in, 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 in the enemy territory, right? <laughs> like, and, and with Discordia Strife, with, with a tether from Osiris, with Heimdall existing, uh, and, and Lancelot on the other side, there's a lot of damage that if a Sobek goes in, and like if Jake says, hey guys, I got a pluck, and nobody else wants to fight, Jake's just dead, right? It's one of those things that you're giving up your positioning for an otherwise relatively safe pick. That being said, what do you get out of it? Well, if you hit the pluck, then you are getting just massive amounts of damage, or just straight up a kill. Like, if you grab Osiris, maybe he's going to get out of there, but you probably force Lord of the Afterlife. Lancelot, you probably force his ult, force some leaps out of the Xing Chen. You get some safety out of them, or you get a kill. And so I think that they put themselves in a good position if it works, but it's that heavy if it works, right? But Cupid, Sobek, look, that's a duo lane that goes back to 2012. It's been here since the Old beginning school. of Smite. So it makes sense that it would be somewhat successful and definitely tenured in this case. You know, in a vacuum, I look at this Solar Scarab's draft. The, the first three are killer, right? Jing Chen, Lancelot, Discordia. Yeah. That's an all-star S-tier S draft. And then you get the Osiris Heimdall as well for the jungle and for Stu. And, you're, and in a vacuum, you're looking at this Scarab's draft and thinking, man, this is an S-plus draft. I mean, this is from top to bottom. Yeah. This is exactly what you want. And then you look at the bolts and you think, well, Vin loves this pocket. Hell, Erlong Shen, yep. we haven't seen in a while. So maybe that factors in, right? The Scarab's probably yep. not practicing against this god, especially in the jungle. The bolts maybe a little bit more pocket pick, a little bit more comfort yeah. pick. You know, Vin dipping into that into that pool for the Hell, Erlong Shin coming out now. I, I, I honestly don't know how to evaluate <laughs> these two drafts. Well, that's, uh, I think, the fun of it, right? When I'm, I'm looking at this Bolts lineup, and like you said, right? Like, Hell is kind of teetering on the edge of the top. Like, a couple of teams want to go back to her in player. Yeah. A couple of teams don't. Erlong, who I think is still potent, but hasn't been picked up as much. I think other junglers, you know, you mentioned the Pele. We see the Daji. Uh, you know, there's other assassins that have kind of filled that role maybe a little better. But when you're going up against Osiris, Erlong's been there. He's been prominent. I expect him to look good. Well, Gore, this one is going to be worth watching. The Bolts taking on the Solar Scarabs. we got a couple of handsome gentlemen standing by to take us into game. That's right, a couple of handsome gentlemen on the desk, a couple of handsome gentlemen on the cast. As the Solar Scarabs and the Olympus Bolts will send one more team guaranteed onto our elimination round next week. And then one team at the end of this set will have to drop down, play the SCC squad in this group as Dolson, Spooky, and Doug with you for 
at least two games, potentially three, if this one lives up to the billing. And the desk kind of set it up for us there, Spooky. Straight from the tier list are the Solar Scarabs, and straight from their pockets are the Olympus Bolts and their compositions. Yeah, I think if you're looking at the tier list, you're feeling really confident for the Scarabs. You're looking at this draft they've set up. Everything is just looking top of the meta right now. But I think the question goes a little bit further beyond that, right? Tiers, tier lists don't matter, right? They don't define everything. It's all about what you can play, what you can play at the highest level. And right now, I think the Bolts have absolutely gotten the draft of their dreams. Ven on this hell, I think, is a huge talking point because you look over there in that duel and you see the Xing Tian and you think, oh, great, that thing's awesome. It's not going to matter. He's going to go ahead. Ven's going to step up. He's going to cleanse whoever gets caught in that whirlwind. They're going to walk away, and that's not what you want to see. Reddit is very mad at you right now. Tier lists <laughs> don't matter. What am I supposed Comfort to? Is king. What am I supposed to base my gameplay off of if I don't have a tier list telling me what's good and what's bad? <laughs> I don't know how to play Smite anymore. This right. is new, <laughs> horrible information. What's happening? All right, we'll 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 rephrase slightly. <laughs> It doesn't matter in the SPL. For your ranked games, go ahead and follow the tier list. Those might matter a little bit more there. Anytime I get a, a, a chance to take a quick <laughs> shot, I, I do have to. Uh, this happened to us the other day, didn't it? We were casting, yeah. and we were, thir we were three seconds into game number one. We had to take a quick pause. But this time, pause won't last quite as long. Game number one now commencing between the Bolts and we're the cursed. Solar Scarabs. Uh, and <laughs> look, Erlong Shen versus Osiris may actually be the most matched up two gods that we've gotten here in Season 9. I obviously don't have the exact data to back that up, but what I'm saying is, is Erlong Shen versus Osiris, so common as far as jungle matchups go. Both have Mannequin Scepter, both end up wanting to build Golden Blade, potentially Stone Cutting Sword first, and both can maybe make some waves here in the first few minutes of this game. Yeah, definitely. I think that Lazbra does have a slight advantage on these rotations if Sam for Soccer makes the rotation first. Because the one thing that goes heavily in favor of this jungle matchup is the Judgment Tethers. If Sam for Soccer can put those Judgment Tethers onto Lazbra in a 1v1, Lazbra doesn't win that. There, there's no way. The damage mitigation is too strong. But if Lazbra can wait until Sam makes that first rotation and finds an early gank and then counter, things start going in their favor a little bit more. 2v2 over the blue buff sometimes results in a first blood. This time will not, and junglers and solo laners will happily back their way away. Now, not only is there some lore in this matchup, the Lancelot and the King Arthur, but I was Love wondering it. when we would finally see it over in the solo lane because, you know, in, in the way that they play and the way we see games get taken over by Lancelot, by King Arthur, this really feels like it comes down to the players themselves. Scarity loves this style of pick. Haddox obviously loves this style of pick. What do you make of the solo lane matchup? I think that Haddox definitely has an early edge in this matchup, just on account of the number of abilities that King Arthur has over this Lancelot pick. Sure, they're both going to be a little bit aggressive. They're going to want to look for those traits. You can already see it kind of going in favor of Haddox here, and that's just on account of having the same amount of buttons to press, but able to press them more times for more damage than Scary D is. Yeah, simply more buttons. No, no, more abilities. Well, same we've been amount over of this. buttons. We've been over this. That's right. A block connects on a Stuart into a Heart Bomb, but there's a Bifrost on the other end, and inbound trades back some damage onto Barracuda. Difference in builds in the solo lane as well, and potentially difference in jungle pressure. A nice pin from Lazbra maybe keeps Haddock's alive. And now damage returned onto Scary D. The Mink forward, and the Mink hits. Lazbra grabs first blood for the Olympus Bolts. The chase down can commence, though. Sam for Soccer healthy enough, has a bit of mana. Lazbra very low, but it'll be clean in and out from the Olympus Bolts jungler. That's exactly what I'm talking about there, Dave. Lazra waits for Sam to start the initiation. He goes in, and they do take Haddock's pretty low there, but unfortunately for them, low is not dead. Haddock's able to just reset, teleport back in, and Lazra able to find the first blood kill. Means that the Bolts have a little bit of an edge now. They got a little bit more gold in their pockets, and it's not a lead just yet, but it's the makings of a lead. And the Bolts have shown time and time again that they are more than capable of taking these early beginnings and turning them into a full-blown lead. Yeah, so often falls on Lazbra's shoulders, though, because in games where the Bolts have, I mean, and, and we talked about this on the desk, you know, nine times out of ten, it's up to the junglers to set the pace, eventually get the team fighting phase, things like that. So, of course, a lot of it falls on Lazbra, but with the Erlong Shen specifically, I've just te seen too many games where first blood, but then kind of falls flat over the next couple of minutes. 
and Lasbro hopefully is able to keep that pace up for the Bolts. On the flip side, San Soccer can't let off the gas, needs to keep trying to find the, uh, the aggression somewhere here on the map. If we look back over towards the duo lane, I think this could be a fun lane to look towards. Maybe for the Bolts, because it looks like Stewart's going to want to spend some time farming up an inbound. Just going to play separator over here in duo lane. Yeah, right now I don't think we'll see too much happen in the duo lane itself, just because inbound on the Jing Tian is going to be able to disengage fairly confidently. He's going to be able to step forward, and if Jake does decide to try to get that pluck in, throw Stewart back into danger, he's got inbound there to try to mitigate that aggression. However, what I really have my eyes on is when Awesome Jake starts making these rotations. Sobek is such an aggressive pick. Yeah. It's the kind of pick that makes plays happen, right? If Lazbra isn't able to find the engagement onto the Scarabs, that's no problem. Jake is able to put someone out of position, throw them into Lazbra, and that's where the CC comes through. That's where the pin can land, and suddenly, whoever he targets is so much further away from the rest of his team, he starts to look a little bit grim for getting out. Now, something I feel like we've seen a bit more often is this Sunder pickup, and it's got exactly, excuse me, what Jake has gone for here with his first option. Wonder how much of that has to do with Scary D, this Lancelot. Maybe just gives you almost guaranteed dismount on Scary D a bit later on in the game. Do you feel like that's some counterplay just looking at Scary D specifically? I think that is one reason that we're starting to see this Sunder Spear start to get picked up a little bit more. Because we saw it in the last game, Kings versus yep. Valks, and it was the Valks who picked that up in response to the Lancelot. So it's a good answer. It breaks the shield, does a ton of damage. The shield does a ton of health percent damage. That'll get him off the horse a little bit easier, and then you can start actually looking at CCing him. Because remember, you cannot hit Scary D with any kind of CC unless it's a stun until he's off that horse. Nothing yep. else will matter. He'll just walk through it. He'll ignore it. He'll probably spam VEL at you while he's doing it. That doesn't feel very good for the mentals. But this is a good start. This is a good way to get some counterplay going for yep. yourself. In addition to that, it also opens up some more aggressive plays across the map. It doesn't have to be used just on Scary D. That ad does add a little bit more damage to whoever gets hit by that Sundering Spear. But Lazarus put one look for damage. Lazarus in and forces the ultimate out of Scary D. He's gonna have teleport back in five seconds anyway, so maybe looking for a reset is Scary D. Get that Soul Eater hopefully purchased. And he does. Able to get back to lane. Farm up, stack up, sustain up. And so a difference in solo lane builds as well. Looks like more sustainy, and, and actually a really good stat stick is the Soul Eater now, and then especially when you get it fully stacked up. But uh, but Haddock's a bit more defensive there with his first item. Still will be standard, but when you get a Stone Cutting Sword and a Scary D with so uh, a Soul Eater running at you, Sovereignty feels like an alright first item. Yeah, I do definitely think that this Sovereignty first item favors Haddock's a little bit more. Sure, Scary D has a little bit more damage, but that damage is being mitigated by the Sovereignty. That's a lot of physical prots. It's a lot of HP 5. And with the number of abilities that Haddix has, the, the extra damage isn't really needed for Haddix right now. He it can go a anyway, full right? defense build and just rely on base damage numbers to do the work for him. Once he gets this Gladiator Shield online, which you can see he's picked up the Tier 1 already, that's when his damage numbers are really going to start coming through. Right, keep your eyes on the damage charts, though, for the Solar Scarab. Of course, you have to consider Baronic's passive here right now. It's going to be there for Scary D. So this Lancelot is going to have some extra damage, and Haddix is learning that the hard way. Well, Lasper wants to fight. Scary D had his ultimate back already. Maybe caught Lasper a bit off guard as the nine turns blessing rolled through. Thus did not get the taunt. Inbound leaping towards Awesome Jake. Where Jake has lurking in the waters, does not have beads. Inbound considering a whirlwind of rage and steel. Wasn't interested in going ult for ult though. I mean, I've seen just ult for ult exchanges over in the solo lane. And Scary D has been able to play defensively up to this point. Yeah, kind of weird to see Lazbro focusing so much on Scary D over in this right side of the lane. And it might be because Scary D is on this landslide. He's not a warrior. He has the assassin base stats, so he's not right. quite as tanky as Haddix. But you also got to remember that shield passive does reduce the amount of damage he takes from directly in front of him. So he's a little bit more tankier than you might expect. And with the Soul Eater online, he's got a little bit more sustain and the safety that's coming out from him so far. Every time this rotation has happened, it's up onto the horse, joust away. And he just kind of chills out there in the lane, waits for his teleport to come back up, if that's the case. And there just hasn't been any real success over there. I'd really like to see Lazarin maybe start to shift his attention over, maybe towards this duel lane a little bit more. But at the same time, Stuart on Heimdall, is that who you're targeting? Yeah, I don't envy that choice, right? <laughs> no, it's, it's so tough to, just, to dedicate a choice to go, let's gank Heimdall. Oh, he bifrosted away. 
So my eyes instead turn towards this mid lane. Veronic, yes, he has CC immunity. Yes, he has a dash, but that dash is a very short range dash. Sure, it's got stealth, but it's only in a very small area. You can kind of tell where that Discord is going to be in that cloud. I'd like to see Lazarus maybe get aggressive there. We'll turn the table, Sam for soccer. I mean, you got a tanky King Arthur over in the solo lane. You've got Ven, who's got cleanses and heals in the mid lane. Cupid dashes and heals. Does it get much easier for Sam for soccer on the other side of the jungle? No, it's pretty much just as difficult for Sam. But I do think that the, his right lane rotations have been working out a little bit more. He's been able to force Haddix back out of the lane. He's been able to force Lazra to reset as well. His rotations are finding some value. Even if they're not the full kill, it right. is still a TKO, and that does add pressure to your side of the map. Yeah, there's some value in that, absolutely. The pressure now, the ganks, the rotations, maybe more culminating in buff steals, buff secures, things like that, rather than early kills, though we do have one for the Olympus Bolts, and it was Lazra over on right. Slight level lead for Ven in the mid lane, two levels right now. So a full level at least, maybe a half level after that over Baronic. Can you fight around this hell? That might be the question now for the Olympus Bolts. Let's scrap around the greater Scorpion as a pluck onto inbound forces Ven actually headed the other way. Scary D rotating out of solo lane essentially makes that decision for the Olympus Bolts. An interesting build path here from Ven. Looks like Warlock Staff, Sands of Time, get some CDR there, so some power early on into some defensive utility with that second overall item. Olympus Bolt's playing physical defense right now, not wanting to let the Solar Scarab's damaging front line really whittle them down. Yeah, this is a build that we've seen from Ven quite often. He knows that he's on a very immobile god. He knows it's a very easy target for the Scarabs right now. Get a little defense online. What that does is it not only makes him a little harder to kill, but also puts those heals on a lower cooldown. So he's able to put out more sustain for the rest of his team. He's able to throw those cleanses out a little bit more. So sure, it might have a cooldown, and you might be using it on the Whirlwind of Rage and Steel, but the lower the cooldown is, the more different kinds of CC you can use that to cleanse. I think it's going to be really, really important for the Bolts because we've seen that yep. happen so many times in these Bolts games. It goes for this early CDR. Sometimes it's the Genji's Guard. Sometimes it's this first plate of Valor. But it's always a more defensive item to keep them alive and in these fights longer. First objective pull of the game, it's the Olympus Bolts around the Pyromancer. And nobody from the Scarabs are going to make their way to the right side of the map, or left for that matter. So no immediate Gold Fury pull. I think Gold Fury would have just been too difficult to take down. And a nice five, 600 gold spike for the Olympus Bolts. And I look towards the mid lane still, because, it, because that's where Ven has got this two level lead built up. Also gold wise, with how even things have been, yeah, net worth. Ven, eight, 900 gold or so over Baronic has simply just out farmed the Discordia up to this point. Maybe able to get to some of those further power items a little bit quicker. But a nice play from the Olympus Bolts to quietly pull out that Pyromancer and grab themselves a slight lead. Yeah, and you can see how he's been doing that. Because he's got the Warlock staff fully completed, right? That's stacked all the way up. He's 24 stacks up on Baronic right now. Yep. He's just getting more camps, more minions. It's not about rotations right now. Both of them have pretty much stayed relevant in this mid lane so far, but it's just the passive farming that the Bolts are doing right now. And you can see that across the board, right? The gold lead has been extending ever so slightly in their favor before that Pyromancer, and it's just because they're having this better farming. Some pressure's being put onto that purple buff, but inbound, not able to get that one away from Barra. Unlucky. Barracuda's got the stronger auto attacks. Will last hit that purple buff. And little things like that right there is exactly what Baronic needs. Just some help pick up a couple of those mid lane camps. Start to uh, collapse that gap in just a little bit further. Definitely early for a Gold Fury answer around that Pyromancer a second ago. Bolts maybe even just snuck it. I'm not sure the Solar Scarabs even knew what was going on until after it was gone. And so now you have to look towards that Gold Fury by the time the Pyromancer's back up. These teams may be strong enough to really split out those two objectives. As far as early game burn, do you think one team favors themselves around the big Gold Fury, the first really important objective on the map? When it comes to the objective burn, I think both teams are pretty even. They both got their ADCs, they both got auto-based junglers, so they're not really worried about how quickly they're going to shred it. But when it comes to the secure, that's where I think things start to favor the Bolts a little bit. They've got the Fields of Love to mitigate any contention that comes out. And Ven on this Hell is going to make sure that any damage that the Scarabs do throw at the Bolts isn't going to stick around for too long. If the yeah. Scarabs want to take an objective, they pretty much have to commit to taking a fight first or make sure that the Bolts are on the other side of the map. Well, Ven able to get two tiers into the book, a couple chapters in. <laughs> like, might be Soul Reaver. 
get some good burst damage going over on this hill. And hell has been so difficult to deal with, not only when it's Ven, the bolts who are playing it, but Paul has made this pick look really good in the past. And then the, the question of anti-heal always comes to the forefront when you see a pick like hell. When you have a guy like Ven who's playing it, I'll hold that thought as inbound plucked back. Double whirlwind of rage and steel, double beads, and an apple goes searching for a target, but won't end up hitting anybody. And nice, actually, reinitiation there from the Solar Scarabs. Double knockup oh. from Scary D, but there's a pluck back. Oh. And the Lancelot galloping around the corner. Not tanky enough, though, to stay in this fight, but Haddox is and does some damage to Baronic and forces inbound back as well. Strife doesn't connect, but buys some space. And the Solar Scarabs, though, good initiation, end up running to the hills as the Bolts find the reaggression. And good fight from both sides there, but I kind of feel like the Bulls maybe come out a little bit ahead. They're able to force a few more ultimates out from the Scarabs than the Scarabs were able to collect for themselves. Now they get to go on Ooh, this nice. blue buff, looking for some aggression. Not going to find too much there, but that's another set of beads that they've now forced out. And that's really, really important because Ven had his beads and his shell burned in that fight. So you definitely don't want to just be losing those for nothing. Like the Greater Scorpion on the back end of it, and now things are looking very much better after that fight for the Bulls. Yeah, a much cleaner picture after a couple of uh, maybe a minute or so after the little scrap. Actually, it was a good initiation from inbound. That's what oh, I yeah. noticed. A double whirlwind of rage and steel and an in sync beads on Lazbra and Ven. Both of those taken away at the same exact time. But also, and, and, and Scary D will get further on into this build and we'll get more bruisery and a little bit more tanky. But it was very awkward there for the Lancelot. Galloped through, got taken solo, and immediately had to leave. So those are the types of things that the Solar Scarabs will hope become a little bit easier as this game goes on. Anyway, back to the anti-heal conversation. Now some items really starting to roll through, and it's an immediate answer from the Solar Scarabs. Pestilence, Toxic Flayed, Divine Ruin, down the top three item trees over on left here for the Solar Scarabs. A good answer to a good amount of healing, not only from Ven, but Lazbra, Haddox, Jake, Barracuda, plenty of healing that the Bolts need mitigated. Yeah, there's so much sustain in this Bolts comp. It's so difficult to find a fight and commit to it. You basically have to start the fight, pull out the ultimate from Lazbra, because you don't want that going off in the middle of your full-on engagement with Ven and Barra both healing up. So you have to force that out before you start up the fight. But this Pestilence, this Toxic Blade, those are good starts to finding the answer for this. This is not going to do everything. you got to make sure that everyone is going to be on the same target, because that's the way you're going to burn these targets down. If you've got Sam hitting Lazbra, but then Scary D and Baronica maybe dealing with Barracuda over here, Ven is still going to be able to find some good heal targets. They're not going to be fully anti-healed. And what is this, Dave? This is another Pyromancer being wow. pulled by the Bolts with no response from the Scarabs. And, yeah, literal none, because, you know, we're, we're five minutes later, wondered if one of these two teams would be strong enough to immediately pull the Gold Fury. You figure uncontested either team could take it at this point, but Solar Scarabs are not quick enough to take the Gold Fury as the Olympus Bolts get the Pyromancer. Far from worried yet. I mean, still it's just a 1,000 gold lead, but it's the, the types of games where a Pyromancer goes and there's no response, a second Pyromancer goes and there's no response, eventually a Gold Fury gets pulled and there's no response. That's where the Solar Scarabs still have to draw the line, you would think, Spooky, because yeah, a couple Pyromancers, that's one thing. The Bolts, a nice 1v1 between Barra and Stuart, will go Barra's way, though Fields of Love down. If the Bolts are the team that, that feels strong enough to go pull the Gold Fury, you figure the Scarab's not too far behind to step up and maybe find an answer. Yeah, they're definitely in a position where they can easily step up to these objectives. The, the key point is that they have to actually, you know, be in the area right, and step up to them. You can't just keep farming around the map as the Bolts are taking these Pyromancers down. However, at the same time, the Bolts haven't really forced the issue too much. They've gotten two free Pyromancers, but they haven't even looked at this Gold Fury over here. Sure, they have a little bit of a lead, but that lead isn't going to matter unless they find a way to push it a little bit further. Now with this trebuchet in mid, Scarabs are starting to group up around this left side. Scary D still on the right, but you might see this rotation start to happen. Haddox is already here on left. Scary D will have teleport in three seconds, so consider it up if a fight were to break out. Scaredy will head back to base, maybe spend oh. some money. Beads a bit late there from Stu, but the Bifrost will be in time. Ultimate's ready to go for both sides, except for Barracuda. That Fields of Love still down. Double taunt in from Lasbra, though. And it starts off the fight for the Olympus Bolt, but none of the kills have dropped until Haddox makes his mark. 
and Sam for Soccer on the flip side. Whittles down Barracuda and makes it a one for one trade. And the Solar Scarabs oh. trying to get out, but the puck from Awesome Jake keeps things going. Now Scary D is the one under duress. Lasbro looking for a little bit more, and Jake might be able to cut him off. And it's Lasbro who knocks down Scary in the Olympus Bolts with at least two, but Jake Another? is absolutely ruthless. Stewart gets his Bifrost out, but he is now way behind the Olympus Bolts. Doesn't have ultimate either. Gonna be a long chase down, and everyone from the Bolts going the same direction here, and it's actually a split chase. Surely. So it looks like Stu will be okay, unless a blink pin from Lasbro gets the reinitiation, a good knockback from Stu. But Haddock's plenty tanky enough to dive the tier one and knocks down the Heimdall. Sam is still here to punish that dive. Not sure if he's gonna be able to get too much though. Haddix should be able to walk away from this one as the stun comes through, but Dave, that burn oh, man. is actually insane coming out from Sam. But all in all, this ends up and fight going the way of the bolt. They're able to extend that lead a little bit further, pushing him out 2,000 now. But that Gold Fury, it still stands tall. And you gotta wonder if maybe it would've been more worth it to ignore Stewart, let him walk away from that fight, turn your attention back to the real objective that really that fight started over. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Gold Fury uh, w would have been huge there. If, if Stu doesn't die, then you're you're definitely kind of head and face there from the Olympus Bolt. At least they're able to get the kill onto Stuart finally. Both relics gone off the Heimdall. He's able to go back and pick up the Odie Bell. But this is the Bolts we're talking about. This is not a team who likes to rest on their laurels. Even with Oracles around the objective, the Bolts feeling good enough about their strength at this point in the game. Though the lead's still relatively similar. And my goodness, that burn is quick. And th this is the worry, that now the Scarabs were too far on the back foot to step forward to the first big objective. And the Bolts are able to get that one cleanly as well. I mean, that's pure respect to Jake there. And you gotta respect the man after the fight that happened there. If Jake isn't landing three poles, every pluck. three plucks in that fight, the Scarabs probably walk out of that, probably four or five members still alive there. But Jake is unrelenting there. He finds his target, pulls him back in, and it's just kill after kill after kill that rolls through for the Bolts. And so when you see him step up, zoning off for the, for the Fury like that, you know, you might be inbound, you might be a big tanky Jing Chen. I'm not stepping up to get plucked back into five members of the Bolts. You know he's gonna land it. So they're forced to step back, not respond to it. They're not there in time to just go around Jake. And now the Bolts are pushing their lead a little bit further. I wonder how tanky inbound really is at this point in the game. I mean, he's got Gauntlet of Thieves fully stacked up. He goes into Chronos Pendant. But he's been sitting on these two items for, for a good bit of time here. Decent prods, 2200 HP. So, I mean, still takes a lot. I mean, he's a Guardian, has those stats. It'll take a lot to burn through him. But has spent all of his gold on upgrading his relics since completing that Chronos Pendant. Will that bite him? Remains to be seen. The Pyromancer finally fought over. The Bolts and the Scarabs both stepping up, but the Scarabs have done most of the damage to it at this point, and the Bolts oh, will no. pull it back and take it away. Third Pyromancer of the game to the Olympus Bolts, but no fight ensues. Just no objectives going the way of the Scarabs right now. Yeah, it's tough. They've, why do we have a totem counter, but no Pyromancer? <laughs> like, what's up with that? I want to see. Hey, look, don't ask me. I'll tell you, though, it's three to none. <laughs> but, I, you know, it's actually very helpful early in the game because it gives you an idea of the, the way that the lane pressure is floating. And so Scary D has felt fine up to this point as far as Totem of Coups go, but I think luckily for us in this case, it's obviously been the Bolts who are pretty far ahead with the Pyromancers and, and the Scarabs have just not been able to confirm those objectives despite really starting up that last Pyromancer. A chance though, the Scary D behind the Olympus Bolts, but again, inbound is just burned down before he can do anything. And the bubble pops, and Haddox is the one who notches the kill. Ascarity also getting melted through. Bolts have found the opening two kills here. Sam for Soccer has got to find some value in the back line. Gets one onto Barracuda, but Ben has the trade out. Baronic oh absolutely melted by Lasbra as well. The dual lane of the Bolts drop, but it's an exchange for four, and the Bolts feeling just fine about that. Yeah, that's a trade you should take in every day of the week there. To his credit, Inbound did get the Relic off before he went down. He was able to apply the Curse on to the members of the Bolts. Unfortunately, there's just not enough damage coming from the rest of the Scarabs to capitalize on that. Sam did find a great dive onto the back line, but he's one man against Barracuda and Venenu. He's able to take one down, he forced the Relics out, but there's just too much damage for him to really confirm both kills. 
now both get to sweep across the map. They took down the tier one in right. They're going to take down the tier one in mid. And what was just about, what, two, maybe 3,000 in their favor has now exploded to six and a half thousand. This is just how the bolts play. I mean, they, they are the... I was nearly going to say they're the kings of a certain play style, <laughs> but we actually have a kings in the league, yeah, so I can't, can't really... That one. They are the... the best. <laughs> I was really hoping for a better word. They are very good at the will bait you in and then in one fell swoop completely run the game over. It's like, like a Jay Dragons-esque style of play where the game feels even, feels close, but then in one team fight are able to make the absolute most out of the small advantage that they've found. It's exactly what happens. And unfortunately for the Solar Scarabs, it's really the first objective that they step up to where this game breaks open. And now you gotta look at the Fire Giant. You're 24 minutes in, there's clearly enough burn from the bolts, but are the Scarabs too far behind to really be here? I don't think they're too far behind at this point. Sure, they're not in a great position. It's definitely looking a little bit dangerous for them. But look at the levels right now. Everyone's still approaching 20. The biggest gap right now is two levels in support. And the biggest factor that's going to be is that, unfortunately, inbound isn't going to have an upgraded starter. He does have the tier two cloak in his favor, and all the ultimates are available. Those relics are going to be an important part of this next fight. The Cursed Onk, I think, just needs to be a little bit more reserved, we'll say. If he just blows it without the rest of the scares being there, it's not going to find any value. Which means inbound has to be careful about where he's positioned. If he gets plucked back into all of the bolts and completely separated, that's going to be wasted relic 10 times out of 10. He has to make sure that he's able to be the initiator rather than being initiated on. I mean, inbound didn't even <laughs> get the chance to do much in the last <laughs> fight. Got stunned, locked down, and just burned through by all of the Olympus bolts. Tier 2 cloak is nice, but Seems like he's going to need some more than that. I mean, the Chronos Pennant, great for, for being aggressive, finding some extra damage, ultimates more often, knock-ups, roots, all of that. Just makes you wish you had a bit more defense when the Olympus Bolts are as far ahead as they are right now. Looks like Fire Giant not on the menu just yet. Still an option for the second course, but the Tier 2 tower on right for the Olympus Bolts is now their target. Same for soccer. Had a decent looking last fight, actually. Ms. Mm -hmm. Osiris found the back line, made quick work of Barracuda, and is well underway in that build. Can Scary D survive the onslaught? That's the question. Double stun on the heart bomb from Barracuda. Keeps Scary D back. Half HP on the Lancelot. Unfortunately, the Solar Scarabs don't have that same combat sustain that the Bolts have. Yeah, Bolts are just going to go ahead and start taking these fights, force an answer from the Scarabs, take a step back, heal back up. Now, those ultimates down, you're going to look for this Tier 2 tower. There's still some fight back from the Scarabs, though. Decent strife out of Baronic, but with the Tier 2 tower gone, win condition officially exposed for the Olympus Bolts, and it's a right side Phoenix that now stands. Unguarded, <laughs> inbound, plucked into the fields of love and evaporates. And I'm not sure more defense really would have helped inbound there. Would have made it last a little <laughs> longer. But that's just a great pluck from Awesome Jake. And no beads, no CC immunity, ready to go with that ultimate. And that's an easy call from the Olympus Bolts. Back to the FG they go as Awesome Jake continues his tear through game one. This is really all that the Bolts were looking for when they stepped up to that tier two tower. They just want to see someone overcommit and scary deep. He gets taken up into the air. He should be able to find a way out with that horse. But man, look at the Bolts run down. Yeah, the Bolts want to chase this down. Blink forward from Lasbro. He should be getting close to having his nine turns blessing back. Will he need it though? The slow. The Sunder out a bit early, so the shield now able to build up. <laughs> a long <laughs> chase happening? through the jungle. <laughs> the nine turns though. blessing is now ready. Won't use it. Oh. And, and look, the Solar Scarabs were able to pull the Primal Fury in the meantime. So another example of a chase for the Bolts when maybe otherwise could have spent doing something different. That said, Bolts still now grouped up as five in mid anyway. And we'll get this Tier 2 tower easily. Yeah, Primal Fury is nice. Good work from Scary D to pull the attention of the Bolts so that his team could make that play. But it's still about a 10,000 gold deficit. Actually, a little bit higher than 10,000 at this point. And sure, you've got the Primal Fury, but that's not going to be enough to turn the tables in your favor. Now you're looking at some Phoenix defenses, and you have some tools for it, right? The Scarabs, they're not completely out of this just yet, but a 10,000 lead is tough to defend against. You've got the Whirlwind of Rage and Steel, and that's really your best tool on this defense right now. The Apple of Discord is going to do some good damage, but it's going to be reliant on hitting a backliner. If it doesn't hit one of those backliners, and you're able to confirm the kill onto them, most likely the Bulls are just going to take a step back, heal up with 
their Hell, their Cupid, and their Fire Giant, and they're going to say, okay, well, what else do you have? And the answer is not going to be much. Yeah, Sora Scarab's just, they, they got to find a, a target to burn down. And, and Bronix getting there with the build, to your to your point. Tier 2, Obshar gets the spell focus, so you get some penetration. Both mid laners well underway in their build. Ven has completed it. Strider item upgrade, though, there for Ven. That's the big difference now of Bronix still looking for it. I like the way Ven is itemized. After the Breastplate of Valor, you want to really spike up the damage after taking a defensive item. Soul Reaver, Obshard, Ethereal Staff looks great from this hell. And Lazbra, a surprising KDA. Low on the damage charts, but has had good initiations. That's really where he's made his money so far in this game. And the Olympus Bolts will gather up around this left side Phoenix. Gotta hope, if you're a Solar Scarabs fan, you find a miracle. You got, you got mad guys. If you're inbound, you can live through one of those instances of CC, but not anymore. Never mind. As a tail whip from Awesome Jake, we'll get rid of it. Yeah, Bulls are looking for this objective, and look at the way they're playing this. They're playing it so slow, so confidently, but now Inbound wants to go in. We're a wind of Rage and Steel. Takes a couple beads off of the Olympus Bolts, and Inbound lives the initial aggression. Oh, no. Good Fields of Love on the back pedal. Keeps the rest of the oh, Solar Scarabs my. at bay. Two Solar Scarabs down, and all five bolts still on the map with sustain. That is not how you want that engagement to go if you're the Scarabs. It was a good attempt from inbound, but now with only three members left and all five bolts up and ready, a trebuchet on the map, and inbound goes back in. Looking like an end call to me. Now that inbound is down, seems to be confirmed. Olympus bolts have the minions, have the fire giant, and have all the damage in the world. The Solar Scarabs, they were, they were in this game in the first few minutes. I mean, he even got 15, 16, 17 minutes into this game. But the worrying trend was established, Spooky, and it was all of the Pyromancers going uncontested. Eventually, a Gold Fury goes uncontested, and the Gold Lead simply built up too much. Olympus Bolts were in the driver's seat almost the entire game. And it really didn't feel like the Gold Lead was too significant no, from those bad. Pyromancers until that fight on the left side, right? Yep. Sam found a good engagement, but unfortunately the Bolts were able to take the favored end of that fight. Chase Stewart down, sure they didn't yep. maybe find the objective at the tail end, but they set themselves up for the objective. They got the fight in their favor, they took the relics, they took the ultimates, and once that was all settled, then they go back to the objective because that's the ultimate prize at the end of the day. Agreed, that, that's the big difference maker here. Yes, the stage was set with a couple early objectives, but it's the fight so lopsided for the Olympus Bolts. I mean, the, the initiation, the potential was there from the Scarabs, but but just overwhelming on the answer back from the Olympus Bolts. Damage too heavy, inbound couldn't get much done, Scary D couldn't either, and the Olympus Bolts will take game one, one game away from a guaranteed spot in our elimination bracket. Can the Bolts get it done? Find out in game two, coming up next. I gave up dabbing for Lin. Cool. No more dabbing for Final Call. And he looked at me and said, I'm going to be on that stage next year. I'm going to become a world champion.
Well, howdy, folks. Welcome back in to Smite Summer Masters. You got dimes on the desk. I'm joined by here by my good pal, Gore. Cheers, Gore. And we just witnessed, you and I, Gore Miser, we just witnessed the Olympus Bolts take a 1-0 to zero advantage yeah. over the Solar Scarabs here on Promotion Day. Convincingly is the word I'm going to use, Gore. We saw, I mean, through, what, 19 minutes of play, only one kill on the board. Yep. The Olympus Bolts finding that one on Lasbra in the jungle. Just unanswered Pyromancer objectives. The Olympus Bolts slowly building that golden experience lead and then exploding throughout that late game. Yeah, and, and honestly, I think that it, it was impressive, again, just watching them because it, it is kind of that, like, slow bleed out for the right. beginning, right? Where it's just like, okay, cool. We're not going to fight. You're not going to fight. We're, we're not going to be finding massive kills. Uh, we're going to get first blood super early and then not do anything for a little while, just farming a little bit better. And, and you know, uh, it's not for, for lack of trying, right? There were a couple of fights where they, they attempted to get a little bit more going their way. But, I mean, you see the big time jump, right? It was two minutes to 18, 16 minutes uh, before any other kills start showing up. And, and then the, the Bolts just have a better team fight from that point forward, yep. right? Whether it's CC, uh, I think there's a little bit of plucks. So I think a lot of bit of haddocks. <laughs> That's just in your face. <laughs> uh, and we kind of mentioned it, but, like, the capabilities of this team, right? Hell does a lot of healing and a lot of damage. You've got three people's worth of engage on this squad that are going to be able to find various amounts of it, whether it's a pluck, all of that one, a taunt from the Erlong Shin, King Arthur just existing and how he's going to run people down. I think that they had, uh, you know, team fights covered. We, we had mentioned that going into the desk that it was like, not only did they have a punch, they had a counter punch. And honestly, they probably had a third counter punch in there, but usually after <laughs> the second one, they should be down. Right. Uh, and then I think that Barra's, you know, he just gets to sit back, much like what we were saying earlier, and find a lot of uh, free damage from the back line. Admittedly, he's not, you know, touch or untouchable right he still takes two deaths but with all the healing around him with the bodies the peel that they had uh, i think it was even harder for the scarabs to try and chase down anybody yeah this cc heavy comp from the scarabs all the slows coming out from the osiris baronic on this disco providing that inbound of course you have to mention just neutralized by Venenu on this hell. You know, you throw out the cleanse and all yeah. of a sudden you just, you have an extra pair of beads in your pocket, don't have to worry about it. But in that, we saw that replay where Stewart gets run down in the mid lane after that sort of Benny Hill chase throughout the map there. In that team fight, I saw Awesome Jake use three or four plucks. I yep. mean, in the same team fight, just initiation, initiation, and they didn't need that third counter punch, like you said, because by the time they got to that point, Scarabs were already in the ground. And I think they did, a, like, again, that's just a good job, you know, starting, I think, in the draft. Not necessarily that anything I w was was egregiously wrong for the Scarabs draft. Yeah. But I think then play on field just, just plays into the Bolts' hands, right? Where it, it is, cool, if you want to choose the fight, we can fight into you. If you don't want to choose the fight, we can make it happen. And then being able to pick up a bunch of pyromancers, you know, a bunch of neutral farm, neutral objectives that the Scarabs just couldn't really contest without it turning into a fight that they didn't want to take. And so I like where the, the bolts were at for that one. I also think it, it is worth mentioning, and this one is just for me, like after watching that, Scary D, you know, ends it at 0-4 on the lance a lot. I think that, that really leaning into to Stuart, who had a lot of good damage, you know, Baronic had a lot of good damage, but I think Scary D has to be a, a prevalent force for this team. And that was one where, you know, whether, I don't know if it's the Lancelot, if it was what he's playing into with the King Arthur, but it just didn't feel like the, the performance that we need. And if that solo lane can pick it up for this game, I expect a lot more of a, a contested match. Picks and bands popping off here. And when you're talking about composition for the Solar Scarabs, you're tough to complain about any of those picks in the last game. All top tier. I mean, we, we talked about it on the desk. Dave mentioned it at the beginning of the game. Just from a tierless perspective, the Solar Scarabs were winning that draft, you know, in terms of high meta pick yeah. gods. So in terms of composition, the Solar Scarabs had it great top to bottom. What kind of adjustments are you making there? You mentioned putting... Uh, a scary D, perhaps, yeah. on a, a more facility, a god, you know, that you can work with a little more. Uh, what else are you looking at here? I mean, hell, I, I think immediately if, if scary D can get like a King Arthur, but thumbs up, right? I think he's going to do a little more. Uh, I also wouldn't mind seeing, you know, again, Baronic, I think, on the Discordia. Good damage. I just didn't find any of the kills. Stuart, uh, Heimdall, I've been having mixed feelings about because he's usually pretty safe but it feels like this cupid has his number for, for the most part and, yeah. and i don't think that was a bad game uh by any means from stewart but maybe something from other than the heimdall granted what was it shibalanke charybdis had been banned against it i think like you know even though maybe it doesn't work well against the majority of the others that's the problem cupid is a really great hunter 
But we, we've talked about the matchup with Artemis. Artemis has slow immunity just on her stem, so all of a sudden you can pop that, run out of Fields of Love, and it's like, haha, good luck. If you want to and you want to continue the fight, you've got traps, you still got Tusky, things like that. Suppress the Insolent will be very helpful for you. But when you're looking at that, and I see a Cupid over there, and I see it again for the Bolts. If they have a Erlong Shin and a Sobek and a King Arthur, that's a death sentence for an Artemis, right? Like if you get plucked by that Sobek or taunted by, by that Erlong, you're just out of position now. And it's not like you have a leap to get away. So I think Heimdall, <laughs> you know, people like Uller that have good disengages will be there. But I think being able to pick something that maybe facilitates Stuart a little stronger, and, and again, something which which maybe one of these two will be, uh, going to Scary D that gives him a lot to lean on will we'll strengthen that front line and keep those carries even safer. Could also throw that Kabraken in the jungle as well to, for some playmaking potential there. Kabraken banned last game, now picked up by the Solar Scarabs alongside that Jing Chen. I didn't have a problem with the Jing Chen last game, so Not at all. good to see that picked up once again here by the Scarabs. The Cupid, of course, overall first pick from the Olympus Bolts, Barracuda, 4-2 on that, looked fantastic. You take it away from Stu, absolutely zero complaints there. These next two pickups, Pele still on the board, right? So Lasbra could go back to that Pele that we've seen played all weekend long here. Yeah. And as well during the SPL phase, looked fantastic on it. That could be a concern. Same thing, Kepri still online. Could put that in the hands of Awesome Jake, but we know that Jake loves to go towards more aggressive style gods. Yeah, the two gods that, that were with ready. this Cupid Riders uh, are just banned out, right? Yeah. Like you can't go hell King Arthur <laughs> right here. <laughs> and, and so I like where these change-ups are because like you said, grabbing them. something maybe for Vin to, to be able to have some damage, actually high priority being able to take this Discordia for the bolts, but get it away from Baronic at the same time. I think that just feels like it's going to be a, a strong pick for him. And Lancelot, again, someone who I've been a little more on the fence about, curious as to where the bolts are going to throw it, but I, I bet more often than not, Lasbra is going to grab this one. Because we've seen it a lot in the jungle. I think uh, the, the few times we've seen it in the solo lane, it's been successful for like the Kings and, and maybe a couple of other players. But like that last game kind of showcased that it's not always going to be a lane he can control. And, and some of that will be matchup dependent, you know, going into presumably like a Bracken this time around. Maybe it's the Xing Chen. Depends on what inbound wants to play. And I, I think he'd go back uh, to the Xing Chen. I think that Lancelot, though, has a lot of good gank potential, right? A lot of good uh, maneuverability in the jungle. And with just the Kabrak in there and the Xing Shen already locked in, you could kind of be, be assured that the walls that are going to come up that, that, you know, like a Ymir could do aren't going to be there as often. Like, Kabrakan walls can come up to, to help deal with your ult, but, like, once every, what, 90 seconds? Like, maybe a little less with some cooldown in there. So I think that that's something that the, the bolts are going to be able to play with pretty easily. I love this final pickup here from the Scarabs, the Chiron. That can flex into the middle lane for Baronic. That could go in the hands of Stu. You combine that with the Kabraken, which, as we've highlighted throughout the entire week, can go to dang near any lane on the map and find success, whether that's solo jungle, support, yeah. whatever. This Solar Scarabs composition in the first phase here, a lot of question marks, a lot of mystery, yeah. and that puts a ton of pressure here on the Bolts in ban phase number two. And, and what I really like even more about it is it feels like it's got better initiation last time. Like, you know, with a Lancelot, Xing Chen front line, I can see Xing Chen really leading the way and the Osiris out of the jungle that the Scarabs had trying to choose their fights. But otherwise, a lot of it felt like it was just going to be reactionary play, no matter what. And I think, like, yes, you could maybe try to choose some fights, but your punch and your initiation wasn't going to be as strong as what the Bolts could do on a re-engage or a counter initiation. So, uh, you know, even at the, I think, base level, the, the Scarabs have been able to level that up. And I also think they've been doing a good job, like you said, locking in this Chiron, very safe pick, good damage from far away. What we've seen lately out of him is starting fights with the ult. And I like that that's where the, their mind is at. It's like, you know what? If we can keep you out of here and keep you safe, you're going to get a lot of that damage for free, and it's going to allow the Kabraken and Xing Chen to kind of control the bolts a little more. Well, the Solar Scarabs ban out Awesome Jake, so take away his Ymir and his Sobek and ban Phase 2 here. And the bolts answer back with a couple magical ADCs. Older run, sometimes in the mid lane, more often than not in that ADC role. Yeah. And Mercury is going to be the pickup here for the Solar Scarabs. We saw El Leon pick up this Mercury, which for a while was top pick, top ban during that you know, really heavy itself. auto attack jungler phase that we saw, that we're still sort of experiencing with the Kali, the Nemesis, things like that. But this Mercury provides insane critical attack damage, yeah. especially on objectives. No one can extinguish and you kind of just have to pick up the Kepri at this point. If you're awesome, Jake, you're starting to dig a little bit deeper into that support pool. And Kepri is certainly yes. on top. And then the Pele as well for, which we know Haddix loves this Lancelot. Yeah. I mean, Haddix already talked about it. On interview, we've seen it True. played very, very well. So I'm surprised that Haddock's pick up this guy for himself. Yeah. And then here's, once again, the Heimdall pickup 
which tells me that Chiron is going in the hands of Bronick. Yeah, I, and you know what? There's I don't know. There's a lot in this one that I think to, to try and cover. So, like, immediately they did play the Mercury the other day against the Mambo as well. Sam had a really yeah. good performance there. Sure. Uh, it's something that, you know, even going earlier this year, like, it was a must ban against the Dragons because Sam on Mercury can absolutely ruin games uh, to, for the other team, right? And, and so it's that, that question mark of, like, what kind of ults are you going to be hitting? And, and, you know, if we're going back to that conversation uh, of game number one, and now I'm looking at Engage, the Scarabs have it in spades. I mean, you've got Kabrakan, you've got Shing Shin, you've got a Mercury ult, you've got Chiron ult, like a lot of things that are going to be able to kick off a fight at, at any given point. So I really like their adaptation from game one to game two. Downside is that some of these picks take a little longer to get online, but if you saw the pace of game one, they got time. Right? <laughs> they, they're going to be able to play with it, and I think they'll be fine. Downside, uh, and this is something you had said, Kepri, who has been one of the most like highly coveted supports, yeah, Ymir, Sobek, I agree. Those are, like, very Jake-specific. But also, Kepri, like, he makes it that far down, uh, and it does not feel like it's like, a, oh, no, Jake's got to play it. Like, oh, cool, now my team just gets death <laughs> immunity in the fight. Yeah. That's going to be really neat. Uh, if Pele goes, like, super deep or if Lancelot gets caught out in a bad spot, I can just make it so they don't die now right. and, like, re you know, re revive them, bring them back in. The Pele, we've seen a lot of good damage. I think Will gets outscaled by a Mercury late game, right? Like sure. It's going to be very different styles of play. Or not different styles, but different techniques of play, right? They both want to go in and find, find deep plays onto the carries. Pele is going to have a little bit of burst. Mercury is going to be able to crit you down with two punches and then go to the next guy and then go to the next guy. So that one's going to be interesting to see how the Pele is handled. Again, I think if, if I'm putting my money on where this Capri ult is going, that's probably uh, the person who's going to receive it a lot more. But you still got a lot of, of good play from the Bolts. I think a little bit of it is is lacking, very similar to, to last game, in some of that like big, okay, team fight initiation. Like, what are you going to do? Like, hit a Strife, maybe Lancelot is who you're banking on here, but yeah. like Kepri, it's just a single target pluck, things like that. So it's a little more rough for the Bolts this time around. I think the Scarabs get the better at the end of team fight engage, but actual team fight can go either way, right? Mercury, if he has the, the right circumstances in the right zone, is just going to deal a lot of damage. And then you've got double Hunter on top of that. So tanks, towers, objectives, they're going to get burned down by this Scarab's draft. The Bolts have a little bit more, I, I want to say, to play around, right? With a mage, whenever you have something standard, defensive positioning, things like that, always end up favoring you. But you've got Fields of Love. Again, you've got the, the capability to res someone. Strife is, is one of my favorite forms of CC in the game. And so if the Bolts can play it well, this draft, even though it's harder to execute, can overpower the Scarabs. It's just that the Scarabs have a lot of pluses and, and very few cons to try and take down. You kept talking about Sam on this Mercury, and once again, I don't think we can overlook Stu, right? The yeah. Hunter returning to this Heimdall. I guess we'll just have to see if Stu can put the team on his back on this Heimdall. If Sam picks it up on the Mercury, the Olympus Bolts currently holding a 1-0 to zero lead over the Solar Scarabs. Scarabs fighting back into the Bolts. Game 2 starts right now. Game number 2 between the Bolts and the Scarabs. Remember, Olympus Bolts, you win this one, you move on to our tournament, our elimination stage next weekend, Solar Scarabs. Still a chance, though, to extend this one on to three. Some classic picks being brought out here in game number two. I look immediately towards the jungle yet again here, Spooky, and I've got to look at Sam for Soccer. Man, you and I are just three for three on early game pauses, aren't we? <laughs> Sam for Soccer goes to this Mercury, which is something, remember, when Mercury felt like was in a really strong spot, Banned against Sam on the Dragons at the time, but yep. banned against Sam consistently. Can he get it done here in game two? I mean, you have to think that all of that potential is still there, right? Sure, he's sure. got a different team, but it's still Sam for soccer. He's still Sam on the Mercury. He's still going to be putting up that same kind of performance. The question is, is that going to be enough? Is he going to be allowed to get to that point? Because in game number one, he really wasn't allowed to get to the late game. I'm sure we reached level 20, but right. by the time that we reached the late game, there was already a big gold lead happening for the Bolts. So you got to wonder, are they going to be able to make that change, that adaptation, and get to these objectives before three Pyromancers have gone down already? I mean, look, Sam was getting active in game one on the Osiris, mm -hmm. and in the back line was a menace throughout the mid to late game, but just couldn't end up connecting with enough damage, couldn't find the trade-out kills that were that effective for the Solar Scares. Need some more of that, though, here in game number two, and then some to overcome what the Olympus Bolts have drafted, because I love the way Gore and, and Dime set it up on the desk. This Kepri, I mean, perfect for Lasbra, yeah. right? I mean, Laz is going to be wanting to get into that back line. Resurrection should be right on time. Not just perfect for Lasbra, though. It's also perfect 
for Sam for Soccer, right? This Murky's gonna be going into the back line. He's gonna be using the Sonic Boom and trying to pick off one target first to get that ball rolling. If Jake is here with that Scare's Blessing and he's on point, you can mitigate a lot of Sam's engagement right off the bat and kind of make it a wash, turn things right back in your favor. Because that's really the big strength of this Kepri pick, is you can just nullify so much engagement that comes from the other team. If they decide to put two ultimates down onto your one carry and you just drop the Scare's Blessing, that's now just a fight this in your advantage. Sure, you don't have another revive, but now they're down two ultimates and you've expended barely anything. Wonder as well, as we got a quick glimpse over at the duo lane, and we'll stick out over here in the solo lane as Scaredy oh, yep. will be blinked on by Lasbra. And yes, please, says Haddock's one tower shot, not enough. And again, it is first blood to the Olympus Bolts over on the right side of the map. Lazaro's the, the, the god of level two ganks, but it's been <laughs> over in the solo lane as of late. And this Pele pick really facilitates that quite effectively. Pele is one of those guys who you really want to get active from level two all the way through level nine. You want to keep that going as much as possible. As the game extends mid to late game, she does tend to fall off. She becomes one of those gods that has to full commit, and she either kills the target and dies, or she just dies. Right. But as you touched on, with this Kepri, even that is mitigated. Lazarus now has the ability to full on commit, find his target, and get back out with the Scare's Blessing. Sam on this Murky, he's gonna take a little bit longer to get online. He wants to finish that Golden Blade. He wants to be farming some of these early camps before he starts making those rotations. Meanwhile, Lazarus is already invading blue buffs. Sam just invaded the Jake? green buff on <laughs> the both side of the map, can he get out? Should Strife won't connect. Might have made things interesting for Sam. So Sam ends up stealing away a bit of farm from the Olympus Bolts, but Lasbro's going to do the same as well. Haddock's getting the Solar Scarabs blue. It's scary, would have loved that on this Cabracken. You just step up to the waves, you tremble the ground, and roll from then on out. Hog gets used, and there's gonna be a root as well. Stewart gets taken low, oh, no. stunned in the Bifrost, but barely gets out. And Shell from inbound, so important in keeping Stewart alive on the map. And that's what you, you, you just need to get this Heimdall to critical mass. You gotta let him farm up in a nice way and avoiding an early death there from the uh, from the Solar Scarab's dual lane. Yeah, a little bit unfortunate that you had to expend the Shell, but again, that's why you pick up the Shell. That's you have it to be used. Good, in, good recognition from the Scarabs that they had to use that there. I really like the aggression that's coming out from that duo lane. They're not deterred at all by their game one defeat. If anything, that's just pushed them a little bit further. They're trying to get a little bit more active in this early game than they were in game number one. You can already see them starting to take those steps forward. Sam looking for these engagements across the map, looking for these invades. You gotta imagine that this will be a trend that continues. But my eye goes to this right side here. Dave, you've already seen Haddis get a little bit of a lead. He's taking level five before Scary D is able to get there. Lazbra, he's not one to just gank a lane and then say, okay, you've had your fun. I'm going to go say hi to the duo lane. Now, he's going to keep going for these blue buffs. He's going to keep trying to exert that pressure as much as he can. And with a pick like Kabraken, who can't do a whole lot, that might be a little bit of a danger. Lazbra just blinked on Scary D and sent a lot of damage towards the Kabraken. With only one potion in the back pocket, he has Vamp Shroud, but also doesn't have Teleport. These small moments are going to make a big difference, and it's right as the blue buff is coming back up. And so I'm not sure Scary D will be immediately on time, but Sam for Soccer is here. But another blue buff over to the Olympus Bolts, and it's just some pressure from Lasbro that gets us there. It, this is the opposite of what you want. I mean, obviously, in any lane, it's the opposite of what you want. But Scary D, really, <laughs> on this Kabrakin, from what we've seen, just wants to be able to step forward, tremble the wave, and get pressure rolling the other direction. It's just not been the case. You've got this Kabrakin held behind pretty early on in the game. Might need some help from San Soccer over the next couple minutes. That's the risk of these immobile gods like Kabrakin, right? To clear the wave, he has to stop in the middle of it. He has to channel an ability for a few seconds. That's a perfect time for Hazard to just step forward and say, hey, I'm Lancelot. I'm going to deal the damage to you. And if Lazbra's in the area, which we've seen he has been, they're going to combine that damage. He's a sitting duck at that point. Sure, he's got a speed buff. He's going to be able to run away very quickly. But if you're getting knocked up repeatedly, yeah, you're not going to be moving very far. You won't. Security is actually rotating out of lane here, so a couple early battles going with inbound looking at the purple buff, and Scary D actually just drops all the damage onto Lasbra and wins that engagement. Barracuda would love to answer back. A kill over here on left. Won't be a stun on a Stewart on the heart bomb. Over in mid, Ven has to let his ultimate go. And what awesome Jake can get done on a Stewart. Stewart 
ends up not being abducted back, is able to hold on to the beads. And a nice getaway again from the Solar Scarabs duo. Yeah, that was a beautiful hook slam coming out from Inbound to interrupt the dash. Yep. Red buff also the going to the way of Scarabs, but Jake is not done yet. Whirlwind of Rage and Steel out of Inbound. Disengages the fight, but Heart Bomb Ooh. from Barracuda <laughs> is enough. And the, and the Bolts will find their second kill of the game. And it's just what the, what everyone has needed, really, is what's happening here. Scary D finds a solo kill. Barracuda is able to relieve some pressure over on the left side of the map. And a good look on one side for the Bolts and a good look on the other side for the Scarabs. That's really unfortunate for Sam, though. He used the Sonic Boom to try to get out of there. Now, ultimate on cooldown. Blink on cooldown. Sure, he's got the Golden Blade online, so he's going to be farming a little bit faster. But pretty much all of those gank tools are now down for the count. He's not going to be able to be too active until one of those comes back up. Sure, he's still got the special delivery. That's a much shorter range dash than the Sonic Boom, which can travel across the entire lane yep. if he wants it to. But now with this pressure opening up a little bit for the Bolts on the left side, might start to see some rotations come out towards this Pyromancer. As we already saw, the Bolts like to get active on that very early. Not much for the Scarabs to steal away on the right side of the Bolts jungle. I've talked nearly there from Awesome Jake. Veronica will stay safe on this Chiron mid. We haven't really gotten a touch on yet. I mean, the mid lane battle should be fun to watch this game. Yes, the Discordia for the damage, the lockdown, the passive, all of that. Chiron mid, though, can get there as well. As far as late game burst damage, you look to shred down some targets with Centaurus. And Jake is caught between four members of the Solar Scarabs here. Oh, Brilliant strife, though, from Venetu. And the Apple, it's great as well. There's still a Scarab's Blessing. Where does it go? On Awesome Jake himself, but hello, Inbound! <laughs> A big whirlwind of rage and steel tosses the bolts back, <laughs> but oh no, the scarabs have finished off no kills, and the bolts turn around too. And it was such a nice turnaround from inbound. Doesn't matter though, the initiation, the strife, the damage, simply better from the bolts. That is the power of these picks on the bolt side there, Dave. Sure, it's easy to highlight the Scarab's Blessing there, but what really turned that around for the bolts was that massive strife coming from Venenu, who's now in danger from Sam. Sam doesn't hit the Sonic Boom, but enough damage has been hit to Ooh. get the kill on Ven. That auto attack needed to hit. I think mentally and, and literally here yeah. for the Solar Scarabs, able to pull one back onto Venenu. And though the Sonic Boom wasn't there, still repositions Sam for soccer gives Veronic some breathing room in the mid lane. Yeah, critical pickup there for the Scarabs. Like you said, if nothing else, just for the mental capacity to come back from that rather devastating loss, because when you set up a fight that well and then lose it, that can be taxing on the mental, but so are repeated blue buff invades if you're a Guardian solo, and we've seen that pressure just mount up again and again. Luckily, Sam's in the area. We're not going to see anything too bad there, but hello, red buff invade. And the Solar Scarabs able to get this one done. So red buff confirmed on an invade against the Olympus Bolts, and then the Scarabs get their own blue buff. And that was like the first blue buff in like four, <laughs> I think, that Scary D has been able to get and, and needed to happen. About a level and a half, two levels behind is Scary D. Haddix well underway into his build, feeling just fine. And so often you'll see a Kabrakin ahead in lane, and if Haddocks were, you know, even even, maybe even a little bit behind, he's just getting melted down by those trembles. But with sustain, Haddocks is okay to step up here in this lane. Imagine things quiet down just a little bit. You're going to get the Pyromancer spawning here in a short amount of time. We've seen this a lot, though, from Barracuda. Just drops the Fields of Love and <laughs> she rounds the corner, oh uses my. the bead. Stewart and the Bifrost, he'll come out on the short end of this 1v1 as well. Ultimate's out from both carries, but actually it's only Barracuda who's got to use the beats. You gotta wonder if maybe that favors the Scarabs a little bit there. Like you said, Barra down an ultimate, down the beads. That opens the Bolts dual lane up a little bit more for a gank, but now inbound is being aggressed on, and the apple is good. That's right. Whirlwind of Rage and Steel is good though as well. Strife connects. You are <laughs> you're spending three ults onto inbound, and you're not able to get the kill. I guess if there's nothing else on the map that you're immediately ready to fight over, why not? But nice from inbound to get out of that one alive. Does limit the aggression of the next couple of minutes from the Olympus Bolts. Don't have that sudden initiation when Haddock, Laz, and Ven all do not have their ults. I'm not going to lie, Dave. I'm a little confused. I thought that engagement was just to force inbound out so that the Bolts could then sweep over to that Pyromancer that had just spawned in on the map. Instead, they decided to reset maybe because they expended so many ultimates and didn't find enough value they didn't want to risk that fight 
Because it's kind of could have walked back into that. They've had more ultimates available for that team fight. So just playing a little bit safer is the pulse. <laughs> this blue oh, man. No way. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Scar Scurdy got one of his own, and that's enough. <laughs> Now, awesome, Jake is the guardian on the map who gets to walk around with the blue buff. I mean, it's just been tough for Scarity. Two levels down, two haddocks. I mean, so much of that has got to just be blue buff experience, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, five now have been stolen away to, like, the first of the game gets confirmed by Scarity, and then one, one rotation ago, but four or five others have all gone over to the Olympus Bolts, as well as all of their own blue buffs. So that's where the big level discrepancy is built up over in solo lane. Everything else on the map feels pretty even at this point. Veronic with that one extra kill over Ven, sitting one level ahead, goes into the Brawler's beat stick with his second item. And so as far as anti-heal goes, there is a bit of it that you're worried about, the Olympus Bolts. I mean, you've got Barra, you've got some sustain there for Haddix. Brawler seems like a, a nice bit of value here for the Solar Scarab's mid laner. Yeah, this is going to be critical in dealing with Lazbra as well when he makes those dives. Because remember, you do get some lifesteal from that Pele passive when you start falling low. Keeps him, keeps him a little topped off there, so you don't want Lazbra to be able to use that to his full effectiveness, because Pele becomes so difficult to kill if she's just allowed to have the full passive lifesteal in the back line, yep. just dealing damage. Cut that down a little bit, make sure you can burst her down. But I mean, is that enough? I'm not sure, but however, this is what we want to see, Dave Scarab starting up the Gold Fury. Yep, perfect pull from the Solar Scarabs. But how perfect is it really if the Olympus Bolts are able to immediately end? I mean, this would be devastating. You've done half the damage to it. They're right on it. And the bolts show their face. <laughs> and no the way. Scarabs just, uh, they, they abandon the call entirely. That is surprising to me. I mean, they are down a bit in gold, the Scarabs, but I mean, it was, it was 2,500 or so. Are, are, that's a head scratcher of a moment there, Spooky. The Scarabs pull it. And I can understand maybe not wanting to start a full on brawl. But you gotta know the bolts are just gonna complete the objective, and that's exactly what happened. So the gold fury goes down first to the Olympus bolts. Interesting moment. Yeah, I can understand the Scarab's decision to step back and not keep DPSing that objective, right. right? You don't want to just have the bolts come in on you 12 minutes in, you're just starting up the gold fury. This fury is still pretty tanky, it still does a good bit of damage to you this early in the game. So you don't want to start that fight already taking damage from the objective. But you can't just leave it entirely, right? The Scarabs, they see the bolts coming in, and maybe it's because of the positioning from the bolts, right? Had comes in on the horse, he's up high. And then you see Scarab, or er, awesome Jake, the Scarab. <laughs> he's <laughs> cutting across the Scarab's there six red buff the scarab. there. That's <laughs> six right. of them, that's right. And so you'd think, wow, they've got some really aggressive positioning. There must be like all five of the bolts coming across there. We gotta back off, because they're looking for the fight. Unfortunately, that's not the case. That's just the confidence that the bolts carry themselves through the map with. And so they back off a little too far, and the rest of the bolts say, oh, well, if they left, let's go ahead and just finish this half health fury. Well, in the grand scheme of a game of Smite, that's a small moment, but how impactful could it be? Oh, the, no the butterfly flutters its way in there and actually connects on a Scary D, which may end up being the better target. Slows it down, Scary D on his way out, because Sanford Soccer was dead oh, to nice rights wall. anyway. The walls are good at slowing down the aggression, but will it change that much? Because Scary D is still on the wrong side of this fight. Pyromancer pulled, dropped, and going to be re-pulled by the Olympus Bolts. Pyromancer, a kill onto Scary D. It's going bad to worse for the Solar Scarab, Spooky. There's four and a half thousand gold, three thousand experience it built up for the Bolts. And it's such a similar story to the first game. All of the objectives going to the Bolts. All of the early kills going to the Bolts. And the Scarabs maybe just hoping they can somehow delay and outscale. First of all, Dave, that is a moth. That's that's important what to know. What did note. I say, butterfly? Butterfly. It that's is a on moth. Me. Yeah, that is on they you. They gotta be related in some way. No, right? not at all, actually. Really? No, they're they're just both insects. You're kidding. All right, so <laughs> if you go far enough, the 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 animal kingdom, they're insects, right? So I'm not entirely wrong. As an initiation on the left side of the map, we'll get the bolts pressure, but. That's it. All right, so a moth flies through. Moth flies through. Connects onto Scary D instead of Sam. Yeah. <laughs> but that's probably the least of the Scarab's concerns is what type of bug just hit Scary D. But it hit. It did hit, and what a shot. There's no way Ven even wanted that to hit Scary D. He wasn't intending for that to happen at all. That's just one of those things that happens when you throw out the Discordia ult. Right. Just like you said, now the objects are going all the way of the bolt. You take a look at the lead. It's about five, pushing closer to 6,000 in their favor. 
this is the oh kind God. of situation we saw last game, and this is a three-level difference. He wants to fight. Lasper does oh. want to fight, but Scaredy is here. Sam for soccer. Says, Major Luck and Lasper drops, and a nice kill over to the Solar Scarabs right on time. Because Lasper was starting to really heat things up. Aaron Dighton Crusher, good start there, and actually gives a nice stack on the Rage over to Sam for soccer. So, as far as scaling up this Mercury, that's a late game bailout for the Scarabs, absolutely. But you brought it up the moment the cast started, it's getting there, right? You gotta get there on this Mercury. You can't be out of the game before Merc is even able to get there. We're, we're, we're dancing on that edge right now, but that's a nice comeback for Sam for Soccer. Yeah, dancing on the edge, but not over the edge just yet. That's the key part of that. We're still in the territory, in the realm, where Scarabs can pull this one back and find themselves a nice little win here. No major objectives on the map just yet. Fury will be the first one spawning in in about a minute here. That gives the Scarabs time to take a step back, keep farming up, get Sam a little bit more gold in his pockets, get him some items online. You can see he's got the short sword. He's going for a little bit more crit, probably going to be going into the Deathbringer there. Yep. So his build is coming into its own. Once he's got some rage stacks online, those crits will be swinging for quite a lot of damage. But it's like you said, will they get there in time? Because right now, the Bolts are the ones maintaining the pace of this game. They're the ones that are deciding when these fights happen and where they happen. And so far, the Scarabs, their only response has been to take a few steps back. Right. We're seeing that continue here in the mid lane. Right, you got to walk forward at some point. Otherwise, the Olympus Bolts will slowly bleed you out. Fury's going to be up in 20 seconds. It's the next opportunity for the Solar Scarabs to make some waves on the map. But they're further behind now than they were in the original Gold Fury. Maybe you're further on in your builds to feel a bit more confident about fighting in. Inbound has gone for a different look at his build this time. Get some healing early on, then the Sovereignty after the fact. Remember, Kronos Pendant was second item for, for Inbound in game one. Felt super squishy. And on the flip side, if you're looking at both support builds, both have Sovereignty and then Emperor's Armor for Awesome Jake. Maybe assuming we're going to be fighting around some of these structures a bit more often. Yeah, this really does tell you how aggressive the Bolts want to be in this game. And they, it's good with good reason. They've got a 5,000 gold lead right now. Go ahead, get that Emperor's Armor. Make the fights happen where you want them to happen. It's going to facilitate their ability to dive. It's going to facilitate their ability to take these structures down. Because, you know, you don't always have the Fire Giant. We're only 18 minutes in. Fire Giant's probably not looking at too good of a pickup here. Haddix might be looking like a good pickup for the Scarabs. He is. Tanky. He <laughs> is more than tanky. He is dealing damage to Sam for soccer that even Sam was not expecting. Gives you a good look at exactly where Haddix is at this point in the game. Soul Eater, Genji's bruiser with the uh, the Glad Shield. And then some more tankiness on the back end of that as well. Lancelot has officially reached that point now for Haddix. Yeah. Mail of Renewal. Oh my. To, uh, uh, additional item now in the build. So two levels up over Scarity. Level 17, highest in the game, tied with, with Barra. And at 302. And then it's like worst case scenario for the Scarabs. Not only is the guy who's initiating super tanky pretty fed, pretty strong at this point in the game, but the person who's sitting in the back line is also at a really strong point, both Ben and Barracuda. The Scarabs are going to have to find a miraculous dive, and maybe that starts with Sam and those sonic booms. And you got to think that maybe Ven needs to be the target, or even Barracuda. But boy, this is not the way that that starts. Inbound uh, goes down. Yeah, you'd love to have the choice, right, to fight, but it's not the case when your support dies. And look at the minimap. All f all the other four members of the Solar Scarabs are on right. Not not a single solitary soul is over on. The only Scarab that's on the left side of the map is Awesome Jake. And Inbound is the one who drops because he's on his own around the, the, the Fury. Though you can say the same about Haddix. Will Haddix even die, though? He's putting some damage into Sam for soccer. Brilliant wall from Scary D, but up and over goes Haddix. Centaurus! Oh, the juke shoots from Haddix! But not enough to stop Scary D from finding the kill. And the Solar Scarabs are ultimately able to bring their numbers advantage to a fight. And oh for boy. now, it's a two for one. And Barracuda going for Scary D. The stun does connect and take a look. Awesome yeah. Jake is looking for the cutoff. I think Awesome Jake has got the cutoff. Gonna be the root. No, it doesn't oh, no. hit. Wow. On the Scary D. The Strife oh, also wow. does not hit. The Scarab's blessing for move speed <laughs> will seal Scary D's fate. So there is a two for two trade. But remember, the Fury goes down to the Olympus Bolts, then a later rotation through. I mean, if you're the Scarabs, any two for two fight when you're at a 5,000 gold deficit will feel okay. But, but in the context of of losing the Fury and now losing the Pyromancer, it's the, it's the rest of the map that's getting affected that really makes the Scarabs feel uncomfortable.
Yeah, Pyromancer goes down, Fury goes down, and really, I think the only thing Haddix was doing on that right side was making sure the Scarabs weren't trying to be cheeky and try to sneak a Fire Giant Fire while giant. all of the bolts were over on that left side. So in that regard, Haddix had exactly what he wanted. Sure, he had to burn the ult. Sure, he did go down, and it was a shutdown. But at the end of the day, it still works out for him. It does. And the builds continue to, uh, to be interesting here for the Olympus Bolts. As Ven has picked up beads, if I'm not mistaken, Med is a, another option there on, on his other relic. So uh, some healthy sustain here for the Olympus Bolts. I think that's the knockback meditation as well. When you pop that, it's going to push anyone that's diving onto Venenu a little bit further away from him, give him a little bit more room there. That's not one that we see very often, but was oh. just recently buffed to knock back a little bit further. I think it was increased by about 33%. So that's a nice little pushback there. But it's definitely the first time I've seen it. It helps against Sam, right? Like, if he gets Sonic boomed on, he can just tell Sam. Against Scary D, too. Yeah, right, and Scary D. I mean, all right. Some value potential. I'm starting to see it. Because, normal, because like with Baronic, if we don't see an Aegis after the beads, usually it's been a shell. So right. it's definitely an interesting pickup for Ven. But excited to see if it finds some value. Sunders across the board here as Haddix has got one, Jake has got one, and so does Inbound. A Fields of Love meant for Scary D won't hit its target. And Scary D will be forced into the ultimate himself. It's all buying time, though, because look at the Solar Scarabs. They're going to get a Tier 1 tower in mid. Sam would have loved the Tier 2 tower on left, but Haddix was there to block that off. Maybe searching for an overextended Haddix are the Solar Scarabs over in the mid lane. But it also opens up a Phoenix on right. So a couple towers going down over the course of the map. But only one Phoenix is exposed, and it's the Solar Scarab solo lane side. It's also puts up some really good positioning for the Bolts that they want to start looking at this Fire Giant. They are going to have to respond to this push on the left side, though. Got two They're going to FG. There. They're going for it. They're wow. trusting Lazbra to just hold the line. I wonder if this is the Scarab saying, we're not going to win a fight around Fire Giant right now. The best we can do is try to get a, pyre, uh, get a Phoenix for ourselves. And the Scarabs will get a Phoenix, so the Bolts need to get this Fire Giant to make things worthwhile. Left side Phoenix does drop down. The Moth connects onto inbound this time, but the damage takes a bit longer to hit. Haddix pulls back that kill. Fire Giant melts through, and this one should go to the Olympus Bolts. You need to get a Phoenix at some point during this push. And I guess, again, that, that's a good shot call from the Scarabs. You're likely not going to win a big fight. So you get the left side Phoenix, maybe the best you can do. Yeah, that's a gutsy play to make there from the Scarabs. You're this far down, you're not in a good spot, you're not winning these fights. So you look at what you can do on the map. How many members of the Bolts can respond to your play? Well, if you're playing on the left side and you've just seen four members of the Bolts chasing down Scary D on the right, you know that only Lazbra is going to be relevant in that defense. And Lazbra alone, he's not going to be able to stop that. So get what you can. Put the gold in your pockets. It's not going to make up for the difference that you've already seen. It's definitely not going to make up for the Fire Giant in its entirety. But it's going to give you a little bit of pressure on this map. It's going to make this left side push a little bit slower for the Bolt. And that's really what's critical for the Scarabs right now is buying time. Trying to force this Fire Giant to go a little bit longer so they can't get to these Phoenixes as quickly and they can't get as good of a siege going. One of his Bolts. Now it can really seal the deal on this set, move themselves on to next week. The, the first Fire Giant of the game, especially when you're already this far ahead, should look great. The Solar Scarabs, considering what their Phoenix defense might look like, San sakura has got the range to push out against the Olympus Bolts. But do the Solar Scarabs have enough in your eyes, Spooky, to keep these Phoenixes on the map? This is going to be a tough one. They do have a little bit of a split there. They only have to worry about three bolts on that left side for right now. So they're not going to worry about it Siege just yet, but that trebuchet is going to make things very, very complicated. With the tools they have, and the bolts now rotating in, I'm not sure that they have everything they need to hold this Phoenix down. Oh, and the bolts are just so strong. Lazbra has blink. So does Awesome Jake. Keep your eyes on those two. Trebuchet drops. The tier two tower still in mid. It'll expose all three Phoenixes and maybe a back and reset at that point for the Olympus Bolt. Spend up all that gold. Give yourself every advantage possible on the map actively. And so Lazbra has built out a good bit of damage in his first three. Crusher, Arondite, Heartseeker. That should burst down the squishier targets. And then Magi's Revenge with his fourth item there. And so if you're looking at, at Lazbra and his ability to dive, get into that back line. Any type of peel. Oh uh, inbound. CC immunity, thank God for it. <laughs> Keeps inbound out of the death screen. But a couple big ultimates spent. Both carries drop their ults towards inbound, but 
I suppose if the Bolts are looking for a reset anyway, you get the Gold Fury head back to base and no harm done. Yeah, those ultimates probably won't factor too much into anything just yet. They were really just looking to see if they could put inbound on that crazy thing. Because if they do, if they get inbound there, that immediately opens up that left side Phoenix for another siege. Because there's no way the Scarabs are able to defend a 4v5 at this deficit. Luckily though, inbound willing to use that ultimate, get that CC immunity, get himself out of danger. Scarabs are still going to be able to stand strong, but they've lost themselves another gold fury. Granted, at this point, there's about 7,000 gold already in favor of the Bolt on top of the Fire Giant. You're not looking at that gold fury in any way, shape, or form as it is. No. So you kind of just have to cut your losses there. I think what feels tough for inbound is, is I was praising the build and how he was going to feel tankier. And, and without Kronos Pendant and with additional healing, Mail of Renewal, he always is going to be a bit tankier right. than he was in game one. But we're right back to where we were. It's a tier two <laughs> cloak this time. So, you know, you're looking for the Xing Chen, hoping that you can find initiation. But again, inbound is just going to get strifed, appled, rooted, stunned, whatever. Fields of love on his way in. Such an awkward position, but it might have to be inbound who gets things going. I mean, look at that chunt dash, just a strife. And a nice little bit of his health. Now missing. Eight seconds remaining on the fire giant buff. Oh, wow. Stewart in the center of the fields of love. Inbound is just burnt through. Barracuda finds the kill. Now the Olympus bolts with five on the map against four of the solar scarabs. Get rid of the left side, Phoenix. Pretty easy roadmap here for the Olympus bolts. That is so unlucky for the scarabs. If they're able to hold that defense for just a little bit longer, that fire giant would have worn off, but the bolts are still going. They want the mid lane Phoenix as well. Mid lane Phoenix pressured out by the Olympus bolts. It's so awkward. I mean, the scarabs can't really fight without inbound, but they oh. also aren't getting much with the Xing Chen on the map. And, and, and the ultimate question here is, all right, Fire Giant's up in 30 seconds. Are we competing for a necessary blink from Scary D? Otherwise, maybe game ending. So Sam for Soccer's hit level 20. There you go. Doesn't have fully stocked Rage, but can maybe find some Miracle Crits. Can the Solar Scarab Spooky step up to this Fire Giant? Or are you taking your chances around the Titan? I mean, I think they have to step up to this Fire Giant. Sure, it's not enhanced, but you take a look at the deficit they're at right now, two Phoenixes down, you're not making that defense in your throne room. The Phoenix is by far easier to hold than the Titan itself is, and they don't even have that going for them. Sure, they've got a right side Phoenix, but as the game currently stands, if the Bolts go ahead and get this Fire Giant uncontested, they're not going for that right side Phoenix. They can just walk straight into the throne room, take that Titan down, and the Scarabs don't have too much going for them. They might make Maybe a, a miracle play here. Well, I mean, this is so risky. I mean, you're going to show four of your team members on the left side of the map here. This is an insta burn from the Scarabs. Oh, man. I, I admire the look from the Scarabs, right? I mean, if you're able to get a kill onto Haddock, it at least delays it, but Haddock just gallops away, uses his ultimate, and the Fire Giant ends up going down. I mean, I, I don't I don't envy the decision-making process of the Solar Scarabs there. And they actually made the right call earlier to split push down the left Phoenix while the Fire Giant went down. The Scarabs realizing it's not, you know, they're going to have a tough time winning a fight under the Fire Giant. But you, know, you still have to win a fight at some point yeah. in the game. And now it's just uh, everyone on the Bolts have FG. Such a hard spot to be in. And, and it's really what's built up to this, that the Solar Scarabs have to reassess moving forward. Haddock's put together a really nice game. So of the Bolts, who are you looking for here on the Scarabs to make the big play to keep this game alive? It's got to be Sam. If he can find a good Sonic Boom into that back line, that can be what sets up for the Scarabs defense. That could allow Scary D to get in there, find a target, hopefully Barracuda to stop him from melting down these Phoenixes. But look at these fire minions in this mid lane. Last is just walking them on in, and that's all it takes for the Bolts to yeah, go fire in. Fire minions have kept Sam over in the mid lane. Inbound, chunked down. <laughs> If inbound wasn't already a bit squishy, I mean, now Sunders <laughs> are hitting him as well. I mean, there's just just too oh, much man. pouring into the front line of the Solar Scarab support right now. Right side Phoenix, the last one standing. Sonic Boom, oh, that no. was that was win condition number one. Doesn't hit, double stun from Scary D on the front of the fight though. Slows down the bolts, but now Sam is in an awkward spot in this fight. He can't really do anything. Doesn't have Sonic Boom to get back in. That's a big ultimate from Haddix. As Stewart is forced to buy Frost away, Whirlwind of Rage and Steel simply delays the inevitable. The Olympus Bolts from minute one until minute 30 have run over <laughs> the Solar Scarabs. The Olympus Bolts find their way into next week. Solar Scarabs are going to have one more chance to avoid elimination. 
Yeah, Scarif is going to try to put up the defense here, but I don't know if they have enough damage. Scary D just gets melted, Dave. <laughs> He sure does, and unfortunately, Stewart is going to have to ult back to Fountain. We are kill padding at this point, and Stewart at least grabs the double, but the Olympus Bolts, the double that matters, the 2-0 win in this set. Didn't look too phased here today. The Olympus Bolts looked so consistent in the early game, got things going, cleaned things up around the objectives. Yeah, I think you could really start to see the writing on the walls there in game number two around that first Fury that goes down. I mean, that was such a free objective for the Bolts, and it was only because the Scarabs had already done half the work on it, but they just step away as soon as the Bolts show yep. any presence at all. And that's kind of felt like the story of the game. As soon as the Bolts step forward, the Scarabs say, oh boy, I don't know about this one. <laughs> but let's reevaluate where we take this fight. Yeah, unfortunately, and, and it's actually what we've talked about on the cast in the past, where you can only reevaluate where you want to fight so many times before there's no fight to be had. The yeah. Olympus Bolts simply brick by brick, objective by objective, build up just a massive force here and, and run over the Solar Scarabs. Solar Scarabs will still favor their chances in this group against the SEC squad, I think, to move themselves on to next week. But as far as this individual matchups, matchup goes, I think a lot to take away for the Solar Scarabs and the Olympus Bolts and their fans. Feeling fine going into next week. That's it for this one. We'll go back to the desk to break it down. Well, Gore, the Olympus Bolts punching their ticket to week two of Smite Masters, sending the Solar Scarabs to the bottom side of that bracket. Dimes and Gore here to break it down for you. Off the back of a level two gank from Lazbro. We saw that in game number one, repeated in game number two, find success there. Haddix showing Scary D how to play that Lancelot in the solo lane. It's yeah. up 4 1 and something or another for a final slash line there. Venenu sending out those golden apples on Discordia, putting out the damage. All around a great team win from the Bolts. Yeah, man, look, and it's, it's very funny because I was thinking about it as how far they've evolved, right? And go back, you know, a couple years ago, what's this team doing, or at least the core of this team doing? We're talking about level two minute, or level two, level three, right within the two minute mark ganks on the duo lane. And where have they gone now? Well, it's level two, level three ganks on the solo lane. <laughs> well, Asper just changed the side of the map he's on, man. And look, if it's going to get uh, Haddix ahead and give him a performance like that, I'm absolutely fine with it. I, I think there's a lot of, of struggles here for, for the Scarabs, right? Again, you know, you go back to game one, game two, some similarities in terms of neutral farm across the map, all going towards the bolts. But I I'm going to say this, and I think this was true for the Valks a little bit earlier. Kepri has to be dealt with, man. I mean, he's just doing too much. Uh, whether you're, you're, you're changing how you're playing around him, going for an execute to, to burn through that Scarab's Blessing, or just straight up banning it. I think, uh, you know, just dealing with that. I think Jake had some really good moments of kill there. I think he got one at the end on uh, the same as well. But there are a lot of, of times where it's like, maybe a kill could happen for the Scarabs. Maybe something will, will, will leak through. And, and then just Capri decided that, no, that was not going to truly happen. Uh, so I think Jake got a really good performance. I think that allowed Haddix and Lazra and Vin and Barra to play a little looser. Uh, the damage numbers, the kill numbers all favoring them. And I think that it was just the the end gauge, right? You, you've got this giant, giant Lansing field uh, that Lancelot is able to, to show up, this joust field, that seemed to just kind of ruin <laughs> a few members of the Scarabs to the point where even at the end there, Stuart had to beads just to get away for a little bit more time alive on the map. Uh, I think that they just read that, that draft well, and, and while it might not have been... I want to say as strong. I think the Scarabs, again, I had said this going into it, I still think that engage wise absolutely could have worked out well. But when you see, you know, a Sonic Boom missing around the right side, Phoenix, when you see the things working out so well and the gold lead going so heavily in favor of the Bolts, then yeah, it's going to start skewing a lot quicker. Yeah, this Capri, I think the one time we saw it handled effectively is when there was a Thanatos on the map, right? When there was an yeah. Execute to, to try to neutralize that Scarab's Blessing. And credit to Stu for doing all they could to try to put up a fight. The only reason they find a death is because of the Olympus Bolts maybe uh, kill padding a little bit, trying to find... <laughs> Chasing some, him into the fountain. Right, and pulling him out of the fountain, <laughs> finding that final kill. Barracuda 5-0 and, and some, you know assists on the board, 5-0 yeah. numbers for Barracuda. Once again, we talked about him pre-gain popping off, and guess what? Barracuda and Venenu, the backliners of the Olympus Bolts, standing by to talk about their victory. Dave, what you got for us? Barracuda, after a win like that, I'm sure you're hungry. I don't know if you've noticed. Sorry, yeah. actually. <laughs> well, if you take a look at the loaf of bread on the table, there's oh, a nice that sticky looks note. so delicious. When you flip it around, you can pick it up for us um, and take a read at what it says. For barrel only. So you can take a nice chomp out of that very real bread, if you that, would like to. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> stale. I think a little hard. 
Um, We've been waiting for you to come back and get it. You guys haven't won in so long. No. Yeah, it was <laughs> just like three days ago, but it's fine. <laughs> yeah, we'll blame the scheduling department on that one and, uh, and not you guys. 2-0 and so far mm. in this tournament. Move on to next weekend. Convincing win over the Solar Scarabs. Then you get Hell in game one. You get Discordia here in game number two. You feel like a, a floating utility piece for the squad. You can do some healing, do some cleansing, do some damage if you need to. Yeah, yeah. No, I love playing Disco. It's actually really fun. Had a lot of fun that game. Do you think sure. it's a, a moth or a butterfly? The, mm, the definitely ult- a moth. Oh, yeah. See, I said butterfly on the cast and was. Yeah, I mean, it's correct. kind of a mix. I mean, a m- mothafly. A mothafly. We'll yeah, take yeah. it. Barracuda doesn't a seem mo- convinced. Uh, no, I, I just saw him flying the whole game. <laughs> it's got wings. That's what really yeah. matters, right? Uh, Barracuda, you get Cupid, um, and, and you got Jake on Kepri a couple times here in this set. Is that feeling like the most comfortable dual lane right now? Kepri paired with something like the Cupid, as far as tier list goes, you well, were able to build up some pressure. Nothing's comfortable into a Mercury. Uh, as you can <laughs> see, I was behind my tier one. Grow up, man. And, grow uh, up. Seriously. Yeah, this guy says grow up, but he was like, be careful, be careful. Merc's in left jungle, be careful. Yeah. He's going to ult you, Barra. You I need mean. to ship back. So I just said, you know, as safe as yeah. possible. I mean, if you didn't like scrims, you know, it's going to be rough. Yeah, yeah, you know, That's scrims okay. are a different story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. You know, of course. I did go three and ten yesterday yeah, yeah. and didn't die today, so. Yeah. That's all that matters, right? Is yeah. what, we, what we saw was, yeah, the, of course. was the good game, not <laughs> yeah. the 3 and 10 game. Of course, of course. Uh, then it felt like this was very objective-minded Olympus Bolts today. You guys went, I think, perfect on Pyros in game one. Uh, Gold Furies were there. Is that just the team's game plan going into this one? Scrap maybe a little bit, but try to get the objectives locked down? Yeah, we've just been trying to clean up stuff from our previous weeks where we were just making mistakes and stuff and kind of like derailing ourselves. We just got back on focus and then yeah, it was kinda just playing our game. Down a little yeah. bit. Trying to be more intelligent. Yeah. Well, intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Mr. 3 and 10 over here <laughs> talking about intelligence. I'm it's not sure. Testing. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, look, it was a great set for you guys. Excited to see you punch your ticket into next week, the elimination <laughs> round. Uh, congrats on your win and looking forward to more Bolts games next week. Thank you. Yeah. Woo. Bolts. Go, go Bolts. Go Bolts. Woo. <laughs> light-hearted, <laughs> confident Bolts there. Barracuda with a dang near perfect Venado impression. That was absolutely spot on. They do, in fact, punch their ticket to the next suite of play here at Smite Summer Masters. Now, if you're the Solar Scarabs, you're going up against, you know, an, a bottom bracket SCC team. Are you preparing in the same way, Gore? Are you thinking about maybe switching up picks and band style? Are you adjusting to the meta that's developed around Masters, or are you just playing your Scarabs game? I, I think, like, they're, they're going to have some adjustments that they make from today, yeah. right? Like, I, I, there's definitely, like, you lost, right? You're, you're going to be able to watch this one back, say, you know, hey, maybe there's some draft things that we need to change up. Maybe there's some play on field that needs to change up in, in terms of what we're picking, what we're prioritizing, and what we're letting through. But I think that based on what we saw, how they played against the Mambo, they don't have to be completely stressed out. I think that that re- residing memory of, oh, wait, last time we got eliminated in this exact kind of circumstance, going up against an SEC team in the same spot in the bracket. So this is where they need to be worried just because of history. But looking back, you know, just a, a couple of spots in the bracket, they've been in this spot before. They've dealt with this team. And while they had a little bit more of a level up and some, some good power-ups, I think, yesterday up against the Storm, I think the Scarabs can just take the, the small adjustments they need to make and, and make them tomorrow. So the Olympus Bolts with a clean 4-0 and here this weekend to advance to next week. So they have a few days off now. They don't have yeah. to worry about playing tomorrow. Can sit back, relax, relax, watch the rest of their competition here. Solar Scarabs taking on Hex Mambo tomorrow. That's going to be one to watch, certainly. And here's our day four schedule here for Smite Summer Masters. We're halfway done with the day. We still have two exciting sets to go. All SPL all day long here yep. today at day four. The Jade Dragons and Oni Warriors coming up next. That's certainly one that I'm going to keep my eye on. And we're rounding out the day with the Levi's taking on the Tartarus Titans. And I'll say the Dragons and the Warriors, look like their set hasn't started, but like they've started against each other. I was watching uh, yeah. Panda Cat and Tight Tardes. They were playing uh, some ping pong out in the break room against each other. Uh, and then I think, well, Mifflin claims to have won. Uh, against Stardust. Mythic claims a lot of things. We'll see. You know, we'll have to check with them for actual verification as to whether or not that happened. Because like you said, Mifflin claims a lot of things. Uh, But uh, yeah, no. So they started, like, they were hanging out with each other and, you know, kind of recognizing, like, yeah, the set's about to be here. But still, being able to relax a little bit before jumping into the game is always nice to see. Yeah, absolutely. They're certainly game planning. They've got it all out of the way now, right? They have their strategy. They have their picks and bans. They know exactly what they're going into. So now it's just sit back, relax. I saw uh, Scream had some music in his ears. Yep. You know, he's he's <laughs> chilling. Deep breath here from the Jade Dragons, taking on the Oni Warriors. That's coming up next. We're going to throw it to a quick break, but stick around. Still have two more great sets of smite coming your way.